all, I want to congratulate all of you um, for you know crossing the first um, hurdle, which is uh, passing the selection phase. So um, the invitation means a lot, even though it's not um, a guarantee of the scholarship, but it's a very good starting point because um, you know if you've been selected from all the people that applied, it shows that there is something special about your application. Um, there's something that has been seen in you that differentiates you from all the other applicants. Now, um, uh, I already introduced myself. And then, um, like I said, my name is Ukwemeka Augustine, uh, just as you've seen the meeting here. And then um, I'm a PTDF scholar doing a PhD in the UK, particularly in um, Aberdeen. Now, um, I'm working on something in plug and abandonment of oil wells. And then the rest of the resource person, I would let them introduce themselves. Um, I don't know how many are here. Uh, if they are not, okay, I think quite a number of them have not joined. So what we'll do is we'll let, um, when they are to speak, then they will give an introduction of who they are, what they do, and all that. Now, congrats once again, and then um, we'll all go straight to the point. Um, I would like to just discuss a little bit about um, what, what you should expect on the interview day. Um, so basically, the interview is usually comprising of a panel. It's going to be hosted by a panel. Um, I, I've had two experiences to the PTDF interview. The first one was in 2019. The second was um, just this 2021. And I think is the panel, the structure of the panel has pretty much remained the same. So um, you were expect to have some person from the academia that's um, maybe a professor, a doctor from some of the schools that um, are in Nigeria. And then you will also expect to have a representative of the PDF. So um, majorly in the room, you are going to have about four persons. Um, two people, most times from the academia, one person from PTDF. Yeah, um, a fourth person is just going to be maybe a secretary. Uh, I think some don't have the secretary part, but most of the centers would have that fourth person. Now, the moment you get in there, um, they must have sent you documents, uh, sent you an email containing the relevant documents they will be expecting from you. Um, they will expect you to have a means of identification. It's actually very important to have one uh, because um, they will need to prove that you are the person who is coming for the interview. Um, secondly, they are going to require that you, um, you come with a printout of um, your, the, the, on your portal, you, you need to have a printout of that, um, uh, that page there that has the barcode um, you know, of your application, your application details with a barcode. Um, so they are going to scan it most likely to confirm that so this is actually a genuine uh, individual coming in here. Now, um, the other things you would need, you are not going to be writing, and as they have mentioned, you are not going to be doing any PowerPoint presentations. So you don't need to bother yourself about preparing a slide or preparing any form of presentation uh, in terms of electronic form. They, they don't really require that. Now, what they are going to require is you will need to come with copies of your statement of purpose if you are a master's student. And then if you are a PhD person, you need to come with your research proposal. Now, um, those are the things you are going to be defending before that panel. Um, of course, there are going to also be requirements to show your um, bachelor's degree, your uh, O-level results, and then um, some years they will require that you show um, journal publications, some other years they will require that. Yeah, journal publications is actually a constant, I think, across the years. It has always been a requirement, especially for PhD applicants. It, 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 in fact, it's almost like um, it's, it's very important for PhD uh, applicants. Now, um, the one that has varied over the years, which I also think they are sticking to this year, is um, awards and um, professional 
membership. So there are years when they require that you present evidence of awards, like awards that you won over the years, um, preferably the ones that you won from university education upwards. Uh, some other years, they replace that with professional membership. So in 2019, for instance, they required awards. Um, in 2021, what they required was professional membership. Now, um, the professional membership, the way it is graded, you may have seen online um, certain uh, grading systems that people may have been distributing. Actually, I'm not sure anybody has the exact, um, the exact values of marks that PPDF allocates to some of these things. Uh, I think I, there is one that we might have to share. I think precious, you could drop it in the chat, a link to one of um, those um, grading systems. Now, however, you need to also be a little bit careful with um, the information you gather online because uh, the exact grading system for each of the years, you might not actually know, but uh, seeing what is available online gives you good, um, a good idea of what to expect. Now, if for instance, um, yeah, so yeah, so on the chat box, you will see a link to one of those grading systems that are published online by someone. I don't know how you got it, but that's what is um, available there. Now, when you look through it, you are going to see a number of things. And those things you see there are the things I want to lay emphasis on, just to explain a little bit of what you will be expecting. Now, when you get into the interview, you, you must come with all those documents that have been stated. Uh, you, uh, you don't go there without any of them. And again, you need to go with hard copies of everything that you got. That's all the things that are there required of you come there with the hard copies because they're not going to be doing electronic verification of the things that you presented. So your YX results, your um, degree certificates, your um, all the things they require that your education documents you need to bring all those things hard copy. Now, um, you know, if you've also studied in a foreign language, like if you studied in countries like, say, Germany, like Russia, like France, where the language of instruction was not English, you will also need to bring um, a certified translated copy of what you uh, of your certificate. Now, there are times when, for instance, some people feel like because they've studied abroad, they will know, coin up things and make up um, their, 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 whatever they, you know, whatever class of degree that they choose to make up and give to themselves. Uh, in my case, for instance, I have studied in Russia, getting to the interview place, you know, lucky enough, I would say lucky enough, one of the guys who was there had also studied in Russia. Uh, you know, many years ago, one of the people in the panel. So you would imagine that if there are any things that are not very clear or not very true, then that would have been detected there. And it would have been, you know, a really bad thing to do. So you just stay true to it. What you have is what you have. And um, people get intimidated sometimes by that uh, feeling of, I don't have a first class or I don't have a true one. If you have been shortlisted for the interview, the reality is you pretty much stand a chance and you have um, you know, that possibility of becoming selected for the whole thing. Now, again, um, let's, let me just run through this, um, uh, this grading system shared by this guy and then uh, lay a few emphasis on certain things and then make progress to the next um, phase. Uh, again, there are going to, there's going to be a question and answer period um, at the end of this um, conversation so that we are all carried along. Now, if, for instance, you are doing a master's or you are applying for a master's uh, degree, um, you are going to have a statement of purpose number one. Now, that statement of purpose is going to uh, be structured in a standard format. Again, um, you still have the opportunity, from my personal experience, you still have the opportunity to update your statement of purpose. So if you have written a statement of purpose before, and it's not as quality, the quality does not reflect what you would want to present there, 
you can still make an update to it because in the end, in the end is what we print out and take to them that they are going to use. So you might not, of course, they are going to have their system there, but nobody is going to start reading all the very details or all the or every detail of the sequence of purpose you had uploaded to confirm that it is exactly the same with what you are presenting. Now, this is not to say that you should go and change your statement of purpose entirely. What I'm trying to say is, if the structure, like the wordings or the content of your existing statement of purpose or existing um, um, research proposal is not as in-depth as you want it to be, you can still make little modifications to it to you know, ensure that you, you put your best foot forward. Now, um, you have your statement of purpose, which is supposed to have like a motivation. The motivation can be um, why you really want to study what you want to study, what's your drive, what is actually pushing you into studying um, the very thing you say you want to study. Now, uh, generally, a statement of purpose should also have like, um, it should be able to connect between your current knowledge and the knowledge you want to gain so for instance if you've studied something in petroleum engineering and you want to do something in uh, or if you've studied something in mechanical engineering and you want to do something in petroleum engineering there should be some level of connection between what you are doing now or what you've done in the past and what you intend to do in the future now when that is done and you've established that um, that statement of purpose is generally supposed to carry like one of the heaviest parts of the max. Um, so by this guy's analysis or in his post, he says 20 max, for instance. Now, if you have 20 max from the statement of purpose and everything, you've defended it well, because in the end, what they are going to judge is the content and your ability to defend them, the content, and then your ability to um, answer the questions they are going to ask you. Uh, now, you don't really need to be bothered so much about um, the interview because the interview is basically going to be on the things you have said you want to study. Now, there are times, for instance, because uh, you are going to have people from the academia there, so you also need to put yourself in the mode of somebody who is talking to academic people. You are going to be speaking to, say, a professor, a doctor in uh, a school, a lecturer in a school, you need to be able to relate to them. This, I, I lay emphasis on this because if, for instance, you've been in the industry for a while working, um, you tend to sometimes lose that connection between or that diversity between the industry and the academia. They are two different environments. So um, the way you address academic people is slightly different from the way you address industry people. So you try to go back a little bit your school days mode so that you are able to communicate and relate with the people. So there are times when they will ask you questions that are going to be like argument that, that, that might, you know, tempt you to go into an outright argument. But you actually cannot argue with a professor in a field and win the argument. I think all of us know that it will be difficult to argue with a professor and win an argument against a professor in his own field. So it's not, you know, it might not do one much good if you go into that kind of argument with somebody who is a professor and of course the, all of these are fine and then you just need to be able to respond to those questions um, present what you've written and then take their questions respond to the questions of course generally when you do viva type of exams or you do an interview it's always a bad thing to say i don't know so even if they're asking you something you don't have an idea of try to think of something, you know, come up with an answer. Uh, you know, sometimes you start from the unknown and you get to the known and all that. And sometimes you start from the unknown and al along the line, the person supports you and compliments the answer you are giving already. So that's one part of it, the research proposal and then the, um, the, the, the statement of purpose for master's students. Now, the other thing, that comes with some level of um, some amount of marks. I already mentioned that is the interview. So the content of your research proposal is one. Um, and that's why I would suggest that you do an update of it if you think that 
what you have currently is not good enough. So you do you can do an update and then print out the updated one and go with it. Especially, but preferably within the same field that you had proposed before. But you can make you know little updates to reflect um, your current knowledge and your current expertise. Um, the interview is very important you need to be able to answer the questions that they are going to ask you. You need to be able to uh, manage that atmosphere. If you come in and the place is tense, try to calm yourself down. And then, because sometimes um, uh, what you give out determines what you get back. So if you get into an interview environment, for instance, and you are talking with the people and you are agitated, sometimes you can, you know, give a bad uh, feeling to the people and then you might begin to get some kind of uh, you know gestures from them that are not going to be so good of course the interview panel in my opinion are very professional they try to do their job to the best of their abilities but it's always good to um re to give out what you want giving back to you so if you bring a happy attitude into the interview room you never can tell but you might infect quite a number of persons there uh, I remember in my case, we had, um, we started off more like a joke. I think there was a little bit of a joke in between before we even got into the interview itself proper and it helped relax the environment. This is not saying that you should go there and become a comedian anyway, but um, what I'm trying to say is that you should pay attention to the environment, what the environment throws at you can be your opportunity to relax yourself. You know, just be attentive to what the people are saying, the comments they are making while you are coming. In. And some comments can be funny. Some comments can be said to actually calm you down and relax you. And when those things are made, when such comments are made towards you, you should be able to, you know, respond and flow in the uh, mood of the entire thing. So now your qualifications. Number one, if you had a first class degree, you are going to have uh, from this um, description, you get 10 marks for it, so 10 points. Now, if you have a second class up, I get eight points. Like I mentioned, this is just an idea of what happened. Uh, PTDF might have changed the process, and this year, I'm giving eight marks for first class, six marks for second class upper, and all of that. So this is just to give you an idea that, now, if you have a second class up, and you are are competing against people who are first class, you know that the other place you can actually get um, your points covered up is in your statement of purpose and in your interview process, right? And you know, you have to actually now focus more on that because you can't change the results. The results are already there in terms of your certificates and your YX results. Those ones are already fixed. You can't change them. So your energy has to now be more on the things you can change, which in this case is the interview and the 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 interview and the um, the statement of purpose. Now the other thing that you can also affect very positively, publications might be too late to get, but the other thing you can affect between now and that day of your interview is um, your membership of professional bodies. I know that some professional bodies will take a long time to, you know, uh, approve your membership application, but there are some others that can approve your membership application within a couple of days, so long as they pay. Uh, I think SP comes automatic. Once you register with them, make payments with them, I think their membership comes automatic. Now, um, some others, like you know, NASA, might take you quite a number of days to process. Um, society of uh, Nigerian Society of Engineers might take you a number of days to process, but the reality is you can affect it. And PTDF is not very much concerned about which particular membership, professional memberships you have. What they are very much interested in seeing is that you are actively participating in the membership activities. So um, uh, you, you, you need to actually be participating in those membership activities. Now, I think um, I'm seeing some questions. Uh, we will actually still attend to all these questions somewhere down the line. So, of course, there are categories. There are there's the local category of the PTDF scholarship. There is also the foreign category of the PTDF scholarship. Um, I'm talking from the foreign scholarship um, experience. I, I, I never applied for the local one. 
uh, but I think the process might not really be different from what um, the foreign people are going to see. Now, um, there is this, let me just finish with um, what is contained here. Now, publications, if you don't have publications, that's not too bad. Uh, it will boost your scores if you have them. But if you don't have publications, then your alternative to making up for this lapses will be your joining professional bodies and have ensuring that you have a high quality um, uh, research proposal or a high quality statement of purpose and you are able to defend them you know to be like okay yeah i think she's back so what i'm saying is the difference between the partial scholarship and the full scholarship is that there are people who are already studying in this foreign context. Like there are people who are studying in the UK already doing a PhD in the UK. They've done their first year, um, you know, self-sponsored. They came on their own, and then somewhere along the line, they realized that oh, PPDF is doing a scholarship scheme, and they are applying for these scholarships as well. Then when they make these applications, uh, essentially what PPDF is going to fund is the remaining part of their study. Uh, so for those people, they are applying for partial scholarship. But if you are just applying and this is your first time, you are just coming in, then when they ask you, you are applying for a full scholarship. Now, applying for partial or applying for full does not really make, there's no difference. You know, it doesn't improve your chances of getting the scholarship. PPDF is not going to say, okay, this one is applying for partial and because of that, we'll give the partial people first before we give the full one. There is no evidence that something of that kind changes anything. Now, the other thing you also need to get off your mind is um, the fear of uh, who know who. Like uh, PPDF, in my opinion, is one of the purest forms of scholarship you get in Nigeria. Of course, you could still, um, Nigeria being Nigeria, you might still find that um, maybe some persons have put us there. But the reality is that on state merit, um, anybody who merits it from the states will get the scholarship without knowing anybody. In fact, all myself and all the other people who are the top persons that you get to meet shortly, um, I don't know any of us that knew anybody in PPDF for getting the scholarship. So if your performance, and again, the, the other good thing is performance is going to be you against people applying from your own state. Uh, so it is not like a national company per se is more like a statewide competition organized at the national level. So if you are from Imo State, for instance, or from Adamawa State, for instance, you are going to be competing against people from Adamawa or people from Imo, as the case might be. You are not competing against everybody from Nigeria. And if you are applying for an MSc, you are competing against others who are applying for MSc from your state, not people who are applying for PhD. So the, 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 the criteria is separate, the, the, the selection process is separated in that uh, form so that everybody sort of gets um, a fair treatment, you know, in the entire process. Now, that's much about what you should expect. So in summary, you expect to have like three persons interviewing you, um, two people majorly interviewing you, the PPDF representative is always, is just going to be there for like recording um, your, your scores based on your YX results, your certificates, your publications, your what's it called again, your professional memberships, all of those things have their own point. I think in my time, last in 2021, I think professional memberships had about six points, if I'm not mistaken, because um, I think once they saw three, uh, they were well satisfied. You know, if you had more than three at that point, the extras didn't really mean anything to them. So I don't know for sure how many marks that's going to carry this time, but uh, I think this is not an official information though, but from my observation, I think it was about six points for professional membership. Now, 
you know, these things might look like the one point, the two point, the three points are not anything, but the reality is every single point you drop in the PTDF um, scholarship interview means a lot. It means a lot because you are competing against the best from your state, right? Uh, the people who have been selected to do this are mostly first class people and second class offer people. Uh, all the other, if, or, or let me say first class and second class people. Now, if you are in that category, you know that the competition is going to be tough because most people who have first class today also have very good wired results. Uh, so if you go there and you start like dropping any points, you know that you know you are almost knocking your own self out. And that's why whatever you can do, you get all these extra documents, try to do them, pack them up, get everything ready, and then you know let um then of course you have to also pray of course you do your best and then commit the rest to the hands of God. But the reality again I must emphasize is that if you merit the scholarship, you get it. You don't need to worry yourself about going to process anything, going to sort anybody, or you know, going to give anybody any money. PTDF, to the best of my knowledge, they give their scholarship to those who merit it. There could be uh, you know national slots to whoever, but the reality is just focus on the interview itself, work on your research proposal or your um or your research proposal or your what they call again, your statement of purpose, work on getting your right, the right professional uh, member, professional body membership, and then put your best foot forward when you go for the interview. Don't let anybody put you you know, in a tense condition. And once you do all of this, grab all the marks you can grab from all the corners, then you should be fine. Essentially fine. So um, I think now we'll go into a brief of experiences. Uh, so what I've given is an overview of what the scholarship is. So I want us to um, capture, you know, individual experiences, what happened on my own day, what happened on some other people's day, so that we have, uh, everyone can have a, a you know, a, a set to compare and uh, have a balanced picture of what to expect on the day. So I, I don't know how many of the resource persons are here. I think I see Precious. Um, Precious was a scholar in um, Germany. Um, who else? Precious, can you hear me? Um, I can hear you. Rosemary's okay, also so, here. So I could mm. pin her as well. All right. So, so I think since you have an, another meeting in the next couple of minutes, we'll start with you and then um, um, go ahead. So someone's hand is raised. Um, Onye, you've got a question, I suppose, right? Yes, yes, I do. Okay, so what's that? A, a quick one. Before we um, tell the previous scholars to introduce or talk about the experience, why don't we just you know, pick on one or two questions okay. you answer and then before the scholar starts talking. Okay, uh, all right. So I think I can see, maybe we'll go that path. I see um, is dressing on suits very important? Absolutely no. I didn't go on suits, but you should dress corporate. How do we follow that? Yeah, so you are not, nobody is expecting you to kill yourself in suit. In fact, <laughs> um, funny enough, this shirt I'm wearing here, is the shirt I wore the day I went for the interview. Yeah, so, uh, but you should dress corporate. Um, don't go there. If you can trim your hair, it will be trim it. Don't leave it as bushy as mine is at the moment. Uh, but, you know, just try to look corporate, but don't, uh, you don't need to kill yourself about suit. You don't need to buy a new suit for the sake of the interview. It's not as important as that. But if you have a suit, it doesn't hurt to wear one. Um, the other question is, why do you want to study abroad? Why not Nigeria? Okay. So, so I, sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. I'm so sorry. So I asked this question because um, I studied in Ukraine and you said you studied in Russia. Yeah. So if such question should come up, secondly, um, I don't know if you did projects um, during your um, first degree, your bachelor's degree. How did yeah. you defend that? Because I didn't do project, we wrote final exams. 
So okay, so they are not going to go very much into the details of your transcript. So that's the good thing. So they are more about your certificate. So now in my case, when they asked why I wanted to study abroad, um, I think all the other people will also make comments on this because I think it was a, a question that cuts across the board. So when they asked me about um, why I wanted to study outside the country, um, I had proposed to work with something that had uh, was going to involve nanoparticles. Right, and uh, in my defense, I was like, "Well, I the main point of my defense. I'm not quoting myself exactly because it's like almost a year now. But my main defense was I really don't know uh, any company in Nigeria that was making nanoparticles. So if I got into a study that was going to involve nanoparticles in Nigeria, it was really going to slow me down. Now again, let's also take note of the fact that some of these questions are just to test your ability to respond to things because the, the scheme is already set to send people abroad. So they are not against your studying abroad, but sometimes there could be that um, view of, okay, so this thing you are presenting can be done in Nigeria. Even if what you are, you are presenting can be done in Nigeria, there are still other reasons why you want to study. You can study abroad. One is um, the exposure. You, for instance, are studied in Ukraine, you know the exposure, the international network it gives you, and that could be a defense. Your international network can be of benefit to the country in the future. So things of that kind, but for your transcripts and um, graduation projects and uh, final exams, they are not really, they are not like, I can't remember anybody asking me anything of that kind. The other people will also talk about it and uh, we see if anybody had such experience. Um, what of we that are going to do our interview virtually, how do they verify our originals? Now, this is a tricky one. I don't really have an experience with the virtual interview because I went physical. However, um, I think what they are going to do is that you will show them, they will ask you because the interview is going to be on camera. So they are likely going to ask you to show them, um, like, you know, show them on camera the original document right and um, again if need be if they start i don't think they are going to go as far as asking for any further proof from your university or like trying to track the certificates from your school and all that but i think the best they are going to do is to show um evidence of the certificate and of course if for instance you studied in nigeria I think most of the professors should be able to identify a fake from an original when they see it. Um, if you have studied in Russia, for instance, and the jam, a Russian or a professor who studied in Russia, the person should be able to identify what um, is there. Then what if the publication that one has is not related to the course he or she is applying to? This, I think, in fairness, this doesn't really matter. What they want to see is that you, you, an academic journal is a journal, a publication is publication. Now, they might sometimes make the argument of this is published in open source or this is published in a low impact journal. But in the end, it doesn't hurt to, for instance, if they are going to give a high impact journal, maybe five points, uh, in the end, they might end up giving it three points. But like I mentioned earlier, every half point is important in the critique DF interview process. So whatever thing you have, bring it on. Even if it is publication that you are the fifth author in, just bring it along. When you come, highlight that place where your own name is and let them see that this person contributed to this work. So I think majorly what they just want to see is that this person is able to apply himself or herself to an academic exercise and present something, you know, come up with, come up with something in the end of the whole thing. So whatever you have, just come along with it, present it, and then it should be fine. So I think for now, we take um, uh, discussions from all the others, and then we'll come back to questions. Does that work with everybody? Yeah, so um, Precious, I think you can go ahead, introduce okay. yourself, preferably, you could turn on your camera so that um, we put space to the name 
um, what where you were, what you are doing currently, and if you like what you want to do in the days ahead. <laughs> um, hi everyone, and my name is Precious of Halabi, and uh, as Austin already introduced, um, I was I was privileged to be part of the um, the scholars of PTDF to Germany. And um, after my master's, um, thank God I got an offer to continue like postgraduate studies in University of Calgary, so which I'm currently doing right now. So um, I just want to say congratulations to everyone of you who has been shortlisted once again. And uh, briefly, so what for me during my own interview, um, because I, my, my plan was to do something on oil recovery, like uh, CO2 EOR method, Enhanced or recovery method. So that was my proposed topic. So I go ahead. Sorry, does anyone have a burning question? Because I think someone is talking. No, I think you can just go ahead for now. Okay. All right. Maybe so, Mary yeah. comes up when she's done, then we can um, take questions in the end. Oh, okay. So because my question was on CO2 EOR method, EOR is just an enhanced oil recovery. So I had a panel, I think we had like more like seven or more like eight committee members. And most of them are like professors and who are in this field. So they decided to ask some questions about why am I passionate about like CO2 EOR method. And they also asked me why I wanted to go for an MSc. And they asked me questions about like like about the Nigerian base because you know we we thinking of whatever we're going to study about we plan coming back home to apply so they asked me about okay so what are the reservoirs we have in Nigeria what is the which one has like the highest percentage and where where are they located so they want to know I want to be sure that you really know what is going on in, in the Nigerian oil and gas sectors and they would also ask you in-depth questions about like what you 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 claim to study in your in your bachelor's, for example, so they can ask you questions from any angle, especially in the petroleum, um, in the petroleum um, industry. And what what are the questions they ask me? I think they asked me about okay, what what are my intentions after my master's degree? And I think it's good for you to give them like a very um, a detailed answer. In they don't just give them a vague answer like you coming back to Nigeria to implement what you want to study, what you what you studied, but give them like a breakdown. For example, mention how um how we have like a lot of in my own case because I talked about CO2 UR methods. So I had to give them a breakdown of how CO2 is a big problem in Nigeria owing to like what we have like in a lot of emissions from some of like the vehicles we have and there's a way we can capture the CO2 and which we can which can be used for some of uh, for producing oil and gas in, in Nigeria. So I just had to give like a very detailed breakdown on that aspect. And I also talked about like my goal, which is also to work in the university in Nigeria and all those things. But if it's not your goal, you didn't have to say all those things, but just make sure you give them um, detailed, um, detailed breakdown of what you want to do when you come back. And um, I think um, whether that, I'm not sure they asked any personal question, but basically it was, they just concentrated on my letter of motivation um, and yeah um, okay and if you if you study abroad for example sometimes the panelists they might be from they may study in your own school so they may ask you questions about your school so just make sure whatever you're saying make sure you're telling the truth because they could catch you there if you're not being honest um, um, I think basically that's what I can remember at this point if you have questions maybe I could take them yeah, with Austin as well. Okay, thank you very much for that. So I, I, I think um, maybe, I believe everybody is taking note of what is, um, you know, relevant to the person uh, in terms of where they studied, what they are expecting to do. Um, and the diversity also makes more sense because at least you can see that some interview panels might be eight, in my case, the two times I went for the interview, they were just three, you know, but whichever the number is, the facts of the matter do not change. They are going to ask you questions based on your research proposal. So if you are proposing, sorry, your statement of proposal research proposal, if what you are putting forward, I want to study is, um, let's say, uh, enhanced oil recovery for those in oil and gas, 
they are not going to leave that and start asking you questions about um, drilling, for instance, or start asking you about blowouts, or start asking you about um, agriculture in Nigeria. But again, it also pays to draw life examples, like related examples show that you actually have a knowledge and an understanding of what you are talking about. The next few days before your interview can be good opportunity to narrow down on that concept that you're presenting, know it very well, expand the knowledge practice, and then um, you know uh, go for it and you get a very good outcome. So thank you, Precious. Precious actually set up this meeting and uh, we appreciate that. So um, Rose, are you there? Does anyone have any specific question for Precious? Uh, sorry, I just remembered something right now because my okay. panelists were, were eight people and they're all very knowledgeable. So they were asking me questions back to back. So what they, I think what they were testing is they want to see your ability to be able to withstand like maybe difficult situation. Like when you ask a severe, like a lot of questions, they want to see how you can respond to that. So don't be, don't be agitated. It's just normal. So just try to be calm and just maintain your, com, uh, just be composed and answer their questions. They just, they're just looking for how composed you are. So don't be shocked if they keep asking plenty of questions. So that's something you can expect. Yeah. So the, in fact, the more reason you need to be composed or keep a good composure is because if you lose your composure, then you are closer to losing the scholarship. You know, in terms of if you become agitated, then you might not be able to respond very well to questions. And when you don't respond very well to questions, you're already, you know, running a loss. So as much as you can try to just stay composed, these are just normal people talking to you and, you know, uh, you address them as normal people, don't see them as gods, they are, they are human. Any questions for Precious? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, Precious, you chose oil recovery, I don't know, and you spoke on CO2. How did, how does, how did you merge both of them? Oh, okay. So like, Please, um, try and, sorry, when talking, try to be slow because you're very fast and I'm not catching your words. Please. Thank you. I'm very sorry about that. Um, okay. So like I said, um, so I started talking about CO2 as a general problem in Nigeria. And because in my, um, I tried to make like, I tried to do some research on the um, CO2 emissions, the current, the increasing growth rate of CO2 emissions in Nigeria. And I told them that if this continues, this is a problem for global warming. And based on some of the statistics I found, I give them like the, like the, like the, the quantity, which I currently have in Nigeria. And I said, part what, what we can do with CO2 is to sequestrate CO2. So they are like, there are different methods of sequestrating CO2 from the atmosphere. So it's just more like capturing CO2 from the atmosphere. And I said, we could apply some of this method to capture CO2 and we can use, instead of what's just like for uh, EOR methods or enhanced water recovery methods, there are different methods. There's water injection. So instead of us using water injection, for example, we could do, we could, we could use the CO2 and we, we, we have to like um, inject the CO2 into like some of the existing, um, oil or reservoirs we have in Nigeria. And with this method, we can, we can improve, we can enhance oil recovery. So uh, that was what I told them. And I just tried to make sure that I talked about um, some of, I think I also mentioned some of the fields where it's been used abroad. And so this way, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a method that it's, it's used, um, I mean, um, maybe in oil, oil producing countries. So if we also apply this method in Nigeria, this could also be, um, this could also be an efficient method because that way we are also like reducing CO two by capturing it and injecting it in, um, in the oil reservoir. So that was how I explained explain it to them, and yeah, and I think they were convinced. But just you just have to sound a bit convincing as well. And like I said, these people are very knowledgeable people, so don't try to talk. As if you know better than them, just be, just talk in a convincing way. And yeah, 
the that way, I think. And some humility. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That was what I was looking for. Yeah, don't sound boastful. If they said it doesn't work, you just be uh, based on statistics in these countries, you feel it worked. But anyways, you you believe they because they've been in the field more than you. you know, I mean, they have more um, experience, so maybe they could know better than you. But don't try to um, undermine what you're saying. That way, I mean, they don't take it lightly. So I, I think if I answered your question, please. Yeah, so just one extra comment in addition to what Precious was saying. You, you know, these are like you being able to relate what you, are, you, you want to do to current environments. Now, when um, I remember a friend who shared with me, he's supposed to be in this meeting, but I'm not sure he has joined. He also did something on this CO2. He had a proposal on this CO2, though he was going for a PhD. Now, when he talked to them about it, they began to ask him questions about the challenges related to CO2, the use of CO2 for oil and gas recovery, because these are, they are knowledgeable in these fields, actually, they are. So if somebody is a professor in oil and gas, you can't bamboozle him, like you can't just come confuse the person's head. They know what they are actually talking about. Some of them were in the industry, they may have applied this thing before they even came to the academia. So um, whichever topic you choose, you need to really go in depth, like know what you have written, know the challenges associated with it. For CO2, for instance, there's always an emission issue because you could inject CO2 today and 20 years down the line, you begin to have that CO2 and you know coming back to the surface because the way oil wells have been structured, you have cement behind casing and CO2 can begin to attack that cement and you know some level of degradation and all that so you need to like really go in depth into that area what it is the challenges associated with it the solutions that you know you can prefer to it and all of that if there are no other questions for precious i think um, we welcome the next person um rosemary was in france as a ptda scholar and uh, i think she will have one or two things to share with us from my own experience that could be very helpful. Again, if your background is not what you are going to study in the moment, uh, don't worry yourself about it. It's all fine. It will still be good. PTDF is not going to penalize you for wanting to study something in petroleum engineering when your background is um, uh, mechanical engineering or wanting to study something in, um, you know, in fact, I must tell you, I even know somebody who is on this scholarship and studying something about, um, I think, logistics, uh, something supply chain and logistics management. So it's you will just need to be able to define what you are operating and relate it to um, oil and gas and how it gives value to the Nigerian economy and the oil and gas in general. So, Rose, if you can hear yes, me, sir. you have the floor. Yeah, Calvin is speaking. Yeah, hello. Thank you so much for this uh, forum. I have a question for Madam Precious. All right, please go ahead. Uh, okay, for me, I have been away from the academic environment for a while now. So I actually work. So I don't know how the gap or how my work experience play in all of this. Okay, Precious. So that is so that is one. Then uh, the second question I want to ask her uh, is, uh, you talked about CO2 emission in India and my, my, current, my current MSc course that I'm going for is on renewable. So I don't know if you can attend to this question because I'm thinking the potential for them asking this um, question, the impact of that I'm going for, which is a uh, renewable energy on the oil and gas. How would that cost um, uh, the renewable energy cost benefit the oil and gas industry, particularly in Nigeria? I don't know if you got my question. Uh, yeah, Precious, yeah, I believe yes. you heard him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yes, um, okay, so I think Oh, you can actually use a leverage of your work experience to also be like, that's part of the reason why you're passionate about maybe going for an MSc course that based on what you've seen in the industry, you feel that there's like, oh, there's a, there's a research gap, which we 
think could be viewed because of maybe some of what you've worked on, um, something that could be, that you feel could be beneficial to the oil and gas sector in Nigeria. And you'd be like, that's part of what you're passionate about because you've seen this lapses in the industry, this lapses in, for example, in the oil and gas industry, and you want to look for um, feasible solutions that could be of benefit to to the country. You could you could use your work experience and leverage. It's actually very good when you have a good experience. And the other questions about renewable and how we could um, help like the oil and gas sector in Nigeria. So I, I think from what you've seen, like for example, you see that total total now, now they are called total energies. So that that shows that. And if you look at Shell about this oil and gas industry most of all our oil and gas industry they are also investing into uh, renewables at this point i mean austin can testify to that and rosemary as well so um, i mean like you can tell them that with your knowledge in renewables in case like um like since most of this oil and gas industry we all need let's say renewable electricity to um to power some of the equipment and and, it, and right now like I can see that some of the people are changing design designs of um, some of their oil and gas processing facilities. They're changing it to electricity and everything. So you you could talk about um, how your studies could help uh, facilitate the transition, like the energy transition to um, a low carbon um, energy source. Uh, sorry, energy powered, maybe anything electricity powered, energy powered. So you could talk about how your masters could help facilitate energy transition in the oil and gas sector. You can also mention some things about like hydrogen, for example, uh, like from oil and gas, um, from gas, for example, we with um, steam methane reforming, we can produce hydrogen from natural gas. And you know, you know, you can just talk about all these things, like some of the processing or transformation that could that we could uh, that we could from like from oil and gas from the current oil and gas we have. I mean, to actually like low carbon um, fuel options. So I think you just try to be, just stand, um, not just make sure you do your research as well, because this guy is like, like I said, this professor is not very knowledgeable. So please make sure you do your research, make sure you're not just uh, being vague about it. So try to just check what, 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 what from, from oil and gas, from the current oil and gas, how can we produce it more sustainably or how can we use renewable to kind of enhance like energy transition in oil and gas sectors um yeah i think that way you would so I, a brief yeah. addition to that your your work experience actually is a good thing um in fact it makes you give real time like real life examples right um but I am just a little bit afraid that if you continue to answer questions in between, we might not be able to meet up with time. And quite a number of persons have some other things already planned. So maybe we just stick to the old program. Let's combine all the questions together at the end and then answer them at once. So but your, work your work experience can be beneficial. In my time, I was also working. I, when I was done with youth service, I started working. And when I was asked one of the questions about why I think I should be giving the scholarship above other people, one of the instances I cited was a knowledge I had because of an insider information I got from my place of work, um, you know, about a particular situation then in the oil and gas industry. So it's just tight, it's find a way to tie your work experience into what you're about to do. Now, for renewables and how you connect them, you can look at what the UK is doing in transitioning to net zero, for instance, or just the energy transition generally. If the big oil companies are going into uh, renewables, then it means there is a future of the oil and gas in renewables. And you don't want to, you want to also position Nigeria in that aspect. Again, I know somebody who is in my school under PTDF that is working on renewable energy. So he's not, TTDF will not penalize it for studying renewable. Renewable is not coming to keep oil and gas as people generally seem to think of it. So uh, they are not going to be against it. Um, so I think that will be it for the questions for now. Let's just, um, we still have like two other persons that want to share their experience. I would want them to discuss with us before we take all the questions, but you can almost be assured that all questions are going to be answered. Um, Rosemary, please, you can go ahead now. 
And if you have a question and you are about to lead to somewhere, you can just drop the question in the chat, we'll answer them. And then once the recording is available, you'll be able to get the answer to your question right in there. I hope that works. So Rose, please go ahead. Hello, everyone. Good evening, Augustine. Good, good <laughs> afternoon, Precious. And good evening, everyone. And congratulations. Before I, go, before I continue, I just want to say congratulations to all those who have been nominated for the interview, actually. Uh, it's not something to not to boast, but like it's a pre like we are honored. We will honor the invitation and we'll go get uh scholarships. And just before I get into my experience and all that, I want to say that you shouldn't be so scared of the interview. Just be yourself, like just be yourself because I don't like you all have different experiences. Like what I'm about to tell you for now, you'll be amazed because for me, my interview was not an interview at all. So we all have different experiences. So don't just go expecting a particular things to be done in a particular manner. Just go with an open mind, just get yourself ready. What is it your, uh, your proposal is saying? What is it your statement of purpose is saying? If you said you have done it, can you be able to defend what you've done? They're not going to ask you anything out of what you've given them, actually. So just get yourself ready. If, you're, if, if there are still things you need to go through, I think you have time. Like one day should be enough for you to go through all you've sent, to, uh, like the report and the statement of purpose and the proposals, because believe you me, everybody's situation is not the same. I, for one, <laughs> mine was very, very, straightforward okay I, I got into the to the interview like in front of my panelists and everything and i just they just collected my this thing as the, the person recording the document was just collecting it that's how one just like ah the first thing she, com she commented was like i like the way you look so your appearance matters some people it might not matter to them they don't care but there are some people who come before them the way you present yourself matters one was like ah you have you have you have you have like a presence around you that i, I entered here and it was just so that that was smiling and so according to them this in their words that i that i brought like a sense of happiness like i'm a joy bringer and that was where the conversation wow. Yeah, that was how the conversation started and i didn't have any interview to be sincere some men like there were, i think there were about how many of them i can't remember i think about six or so i think one was a one was a and uh, was like maybe a cop member just arranging the documents and everything but the other one i think others were professors from other universities people that entered before me they there was a girl that came out crying of the questions and everything like all the questions all the backing bashing and everything but for for me i had no like me i, I just told myself that there's nothing i've not seen like i went prepared i i just told myself that it's not going to be the same that it's happened to you it's not going to happen like just go with a clean slate you've heard from different people now just get yourself ready enter the interview hall don't be too don't don't show the arrow you know sometimes so uh, overconfidence can be like arrogance some people can look at it as arrogant just try to be optimal don't don't be too timid no don't be too timid one and one thing like one of the man rec uh, recommended me for was like the way i comported myself and the way i, I wasn't shy to look at them in the face me i was like this was because usually i heard that nigerians and nigerian professors this this and that so a little bit a little background about myself sorry i don't i jumped in without introducing myself <laughs> so my name is rosemary goko and um i'm currently in france i was also a ptdf scholar 
for which year was that? 2018, 2019, yes. <laughs> for, yeah, my master, <laughs> for my master's degree here in France, and I attended IFP school. And petroleum institution of petrol and France institution of petroleum yes and my undergraduate was also like in Russia so I didn't know like for me coming to Nigeria for my for, for the interview was for me that was, that was the first time I've ever had like experience with Nigerian lecturers and everything though I've heard a lot but like for me it was like a very smooth ride because they like literally they, I didn't have any like interview like this was the first like uh, questions uh, like the first comment they made and the other, and the rest what followed was ah you you did you did petroleum engineering your undergraduate you say yes one asked me why do you want uh, this scholarship before I, uh, before I open my mouth to answer another one started talking another thing like just trivial matters like just trivial like nothing they asked me nothing well, that one that asked me so i was about to speak this one will bring another another topic and we'll start discussing what was it they asked me the only question i knew they they they, they were eager to know was like how was my experience in russia how was my experience in russia did i know anybody there beforehand i said no so they were like how did, how did i like how did i cope that was the only question and it was more like a discussion like a discussion it got to an it got to a point that like i said like i said telling one of them like he i can't remember what he asked but he we, that he, he he thinks but he was just talking about like the advancement of the country and their educational system and all that when you just got talking like you don't need to like for me when i came out when i finished like after everything after this conversation they just then they started like they were Muslim, and mind you, these people were Muslim. All of them with their baba, with their cap and everything. They started blessing me. Like, you see, when a father sits a daughter down to tell you something, like to bless you, that was what happened in my interview. It got to a, a particular point. I was so emotional, like I didn't know where, when I started crying, like, but it was like tears of maybe something bad that happened to me. Like I, I, I never expected it. And and when I said crying, one stood up and gave me like this, like you see this, they keep on like it was so and it was so divine. Like I, nobody could wrap. I couldn't wrap my head around the whole thing. But like after everything, they just told me congratulations. There, there and then they told me congratulations. So when I went, like I was like, God, what is this? And and pray and, and the thing and one thing again, I told myself before when I got there, and the way I saw the whole thing like because when I got the, the same interview was three o'clock yeah, I got there around three and there were lots of people. If you are doing your interview in Abuja, oh my god, I think you should try to go early because the people were like, oh my god, it's the, the crowd was a lot, and. At first, what did before before we started interview? Believe you me, they were do, doing some very shady things, but I told myself that nothing they are doing will affect my 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 slot. That was what I told myself. So don't go in there already shooting yourself in the leg, thinking and thinking negatively. Be positive about the whole situation. Seriously, be positive because. If you know who you are, if you're a child of God, tell God that God, this is my time and your turn. He said what in his word? He said, sorry, I'm going to, but like, it's me. That's who I am. I must say something. He said, at the right time, at the right seasons. And when is that season for you? You have to believe that this is your season. This is your time. You have to believe it. So for me, I, I just told myself that no matter what, I'm going to get a scholarship. And there was a guy that was sitting beside me before we entered for the interview. I had told him he was being so agitated, this and that. I told him, I don't care. Whatever they want to do, I'm getting this scholarship. So at first, he thought I was joking. And anytime he called me, I, I told him. So he was like, ah, this girl, what kind of mind do you have? But it got to an extent. You just have to go there like with that assurance that God has your back. Because 
to be sincere, or I'm not saying what my colleagues have said are wrong. They have said that is what most cases happen. You can have an amazing interview, everything, but if the God factor is not there, to be sincere, we, we know where we are from. If the God factor is not there, because I saw that there are 8,000 people that have been invited for this interview. So we have to prepare our minds that God is going to favor us. God is going to favor Don't go, go with that negative attitude and don't slouch. Go there with your head up high. You are a child of God. Go there. It's your time. I'm sorry, mine was not necessarily an interview. That's why I can give you back like this. So I don't know, but I, I've heard from different people how the interview went. A guy told me that. It, and again, sorry, and one thing I want to say, because I think that, that um, on the panel, there are lots of people in the EOR, like Enhanced Oil Recovery, like they had a, a lot of le lecturers from that department. So if you have anything remotely close to that, you should, you should master it. Yeah, you should master it because they asked a lot of questions. Most of the guys I met, that they told me they had something like, or maybe the undergraduate was on ill, enhanced oil recovery or something. They asked a lot of questions because I think they had a lot of lecturers in that field and everything. So it's something, just a quick one. But for me, it wasn't an interview. It was more like a conversation, like I'm talking to you here and after they just blessed me onward and that was just it. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Rosemary, you never told me this. <laughs> Yeah, but it's, it's very good to see all these different angles because in my first, like you already mentioned, the cases are different, but pray for the best, hope for the best, and then believe yeah. you're going to get for the best. However, prepare very well on exactly. the area that you have chosen to, you know, um, be your research focus. Yeah. So thank you for that. Questions are going to come at the end of um, the whole thing. I think we have one more person. I am not sure Kazim is able to join. Okay. So we would um, welcome Josephine and uh, uh, just hear her experience. And TJ, are you there? Yeah. Can everyone yeah. hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, but your voice is a bit far away. Really? Yeah. I don't know what I can do about the voice thing now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is it is it a bit loud now? Yeah, it's better now. Fine. Okay. So Bridget, you can hear her, right? Yeah, I can hear her very well. All right, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everyone, or good day, depending on the time zone. Uh, like everyone has said, I just want to congratulate everyone for getting this far and then specially thank um, Rosemary for the wonderful uh, gist that she just gave to us. I, I mean, if I was on her panel, I would give her the, the scholarship too because I really felt the energy from here and I'm like, no, 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 of course, we are not like Mary. <laughs> no, so I'm sure you. everybody <laughs> wants to have... <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure everybody wants to have an interview like with Mary's. And the like like she said, uh, the PCDF interview is not, it's fluid. It's more fluid than a very rigid structure. And so we, we should, like she said, and everybody has said, we should prepare and be ready to answer our questions thrown at us. And we should also be ready to, you know, win them over with our charm like Rosemary did as well. So either one that comes, you know, we're ready for it. So my story is um, a bit not so similar because I did, I was asked a couple questions, but it wasn't long. I'm, um, okay, a bit of myself, I'm Josephine, studying data science in RGU. Austin is my friend <laughs> and in the same school with me right and, now. And we are working in the same place. And we work in the same and company. We our office, internet <laughs> class, like, yeah, so we have a lot of this. stories, you know. And yeah. we practically did the interview together, actually. And um, for Austin and I, 
our interview was in 2020, but because of the pandemic, uh, PTDF answered us in 2021. So my application at the time was for drilling, um, drilling engineering, if I remember correctly. But I'm studying data science now. I'm a petroleum engineer turned data science scientist, rather. So um, the questions that I got asked during the interview, of course, were related to petroleum engineering, drilling engineering, to be specific, as it was stated in my in my um, statement of purpose at the time. But when I got the scholarship, I had the opportunity to switch to data science. And if anybody is here and studying data science, I could also answer some questions if you think that you would need help with that. My interview was, um, I think for me, it was a panel of um, three to four people. So about the same number with us things. And um, it didn't take up to 10 minutes. I think it was over in like six to seven minutes. And when I came, like Austin said, you have to have all these physical documents that they've asked you to bring. And one or two of the people on the panel were already looking over the document that I had while the one who seemed to be the lead panelist was asking questions. And the kind of questions they asked me were things like, what value would the costs bring to the oil and gas industry and to the country at large? And um, so these are kind of questions that you have to also rehearse. Every, every uh, scholar or potential scholar here and with whatever course that you guys are studying or planning to study, there's a relevance in the oil and gas industry. The oil and gas industry is very vast and there are a lot of use cases. And so don't fret about, oh, what do I, what do I do? Or if it's not drilling engineering or petroleum engineering, how can I tie it to the oil and gas industry? You just have to do like a Google search or stuff to find relevance of your course to the oil and gas industry. There's a lot. And so uh, they want to see that you know what it is that you plan to do. They also would ask, or for me, they asked questions that, that I think they wanted to know if I planned to, to like run away totally or to come back to the country to help the country. And if um, if your goal is to run away, I can't, I don't know. <laughs> I can't, can't advise help. you, can't help us. you can't, to you run can't away. <laughs> And because I was going to say, I'd advise you to be confident and also to be honest. But let's face it, if we plan to run away, you cannot tell them that you want to run away. So in that regard, I would you know, suggest or advise that you have to be diplomatic in your answer. Or really sell to them that you plan to come back to the country to make the country better. So uh, they also asked... Um, what kind of questions did they ask again? I think they also asked questions about my the things that I had put in my statement of purpose. Somebody was asking about work experience. My work experience actually came to play, and like I think it was precious that answered. There, there, you know, some of sometimes, most times, what it is that you want to study after having worked for so long and you know being away from the academic space is something related to the gaps that you have seen while working in the industry. And so if you're able to sell to them that, oh, the reason why I want to go study this course is because I have seen so, so, so gaps in the industry that I'm planning to close with these skills that I'm planning to acquire, it's something that would, you know, resonate with them well. So basically, those were the kind of questions that I got asked and I kept on smiling, maybe not as much as Rosemary, but I was trying to, to also, you know, be on um, my best behavior, dress well, be confident, be well articulated, and be honest in that. For me, I wasn't asked, you know, rigorous questions. I think they do that more for PhD candidates. But I think even with the PhD scholars, be honest. If you don't know, then you don't know. I mean, they would ask you a lot of questions you might not necessarily know all the answers so you can attempt to but when it becomes a scenario of you trying to beat around the bush you really don't know and it's obvious that you don't know and you know that the people that you're talking to are renowned people in the industry there's no need them um, trying to 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 sell to them something that you don't have you can say stuff like well honestly i do not know this but i would research this you bring up a good point and i would 
make a note to research this or add this to my research proposal. And those things can go a long way to, to show to them that, oh, yeah, you are somebody who is willing to learn. You don't want to go and be boastful. You don't want to go and be arrogant like everybody has said. So um, if you are big on God, you also pray, <laughs> like Rosemary said. And I think that um, uh, what we are trying to do is not to say that these are um, clear-cut um, questions that they will ask. We're just trying to share our our experience to let you know the kind of questions that they did ask us, the kind of questions to expect, the kind of things to do that might win them over in terms of like your publications, like Austin said, or the awards that you have won or the professional bodies that you're part of. But at the end of the day, uh, different experiences, you might be lucky and, you know, be on a panel where they just want you to be a Rosemary. <laughs> or you might be on a panel where they'd ask you a lot of questions, but either way, the goal is that you are prepared for both cases, and it's my prayer that you all will do well. So I wish you all the best, and if you have any questions, and like I said earlier, if you have any questions also regarding regarding data science, so if you want to know uh, the, the values that data science can bring to the oil and gas industry. There's a lot of data sciences affecting oil and gas from exploration in terms of uh, reservoir characterization to drilling, because you need data science also these days in drilling optimization, in production, even down to logistics. So there's a lot that you can say as regards why a, a, a master's program in data science will also come to play in the oil and gas industry and especially the industry in Nigeria. So um, thank you very much again for your time. And if you have any questions, I'm open to answering them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. We appreciate Mary. the- I would accept it. So that was the Rosemary text on that interview. <laughs> Yeah, we forgot to mention how we were running around to get um, registered with the Nigerian Society of Petroleum Engineers, oh, you know, yes. which eventually became very useful um, to the entire thing. Yeah, so um, I think we'll now go through a series of questions and answers so that we are able to close on time. Um, just to lay emphasis on it, Justin has already mentioned that oil and gas is very vast. So, in fact, there is almost nothing you study that is not relevant mm -hmm. to the oil and gas industry. Even if you are doing, um, not, I'm not mentioning this like as a way of looking down on any course, but from soil science up to any other course you are doing has application to the oil and gas industry. So, it's for you to figure out what that application is and convince the people that you know that this is really applicable and this is going to help and be beneficial to the oil and gas industry in Nigeria. So I think with that, we take questions from Kelvin and from Bridges. I see your hands raised. Kelvin, go ahead. Hello. Yeah, Kelvin, we can hear you. Okay, so thank you once again, everyone. Okay, for me, um, I did um, my first degree was in uh, electrical electronics engineering. Then I started working in the oil and gas. I have like over 10 years plus experience. So now I have been away from my first love, uh, electrical. Yeah. But right now, I'm going into something that is a bit closer to electrical more than which is renewable energy. Yeah. So I know, um, sorry, your name, um, the, the lady that is doing uh, data science, she yes, tried to explain how one can tie whatever course you choose to study, you know, into the industry. And... Uh, I think I, 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 I learned a lot from what. So now, 
another question I have is marital status. You know, I know that you guys probably are not married. I don't know how that will come into play because for me, I am. Okay, so okay. that's one. Okay, okay, so just answer that first before okay. I progress to another question. In fact, I can stand here and start counting all the married people that signed. <laughs> just just is married. Quite a number of other people are married. Like, even if I close my eyes, I will mention their name. In fact, yeah, that if, if it were possible, yeah, if you are coming to the UK, <laughs> I'm saying very funny thing now. It's even prefer that you are married if you are coming to the UK. Yeah, so GTDF <laughs> is not going to pay you and your spouse, for instance, but um, if you are married and you come to the UK, it makes a whole lot of difference for you as a person, for the family as a whole. So, yeah, because um, your wife or your husband will have the right to work full time while you are studying, and you know what that translates to. So, marriage is not a negative on the scholarship. However, the scholarship does not cover your spouse. But if your spouse comes here, the spouse will be able to work full time. In the UK in particular, I don't know other places. But okay. it's, never, it's never going to affect your chances of getting the scholarship. That's uh, in fact, the conditions of living in the other countries, I can't say, but for getting the scholarship, marital status has no role to play in it. None of them. OK, well, thank you very much. Then uh, I don't belong to any professor, but I know you, you touched on that during your and you did mention that there are some that one can easily just get into. And again, when you were addressing us, you said that you are even more interested in your your participation. So me that don't belong to any, even if I eventually get one today, tomorrow before the when they begin to talk about my participation, how do I defend that? No, what I was trying to say is not that they are going to start asking you individual questions about what you've done for the organization or in the organization. No, that's not the case. Um, by interested in your participation, I meant to say that they want to see that you belong to somewhere. So essentially, your belonging to the association is going to be assumed that you participated. I hope you get the point. Yeah, so it's not like they are not going to, they don't even have that time because they have, you know, tons of people to attend to. So they are not going to start asking you specific questions about what have you done in the organization, what is your contribution. Mm -hmm. But like I mentioned, I know that SPE, Society of Petroleum Engineers, which welcomes people from all walks of life, uh, even people in human resources can join SPE so long as they have anything to do with oil and gas. SP, you can register today and get your membership approved even right now as we're well. talking. Okay. Yeah. Then um, NAPE, Nigerian, Nigerian Association of Petroleum Exploration is, is another one too. I think when I did it, it took less than a week to approve. However, you will need somebody who is a, a member of NAPE to refer you or to stand in as your reference. You could check them up on Facebook, N-A-P-E, -E, NAPE. Um, and then find some of their members there, chat them up. My membership is currently not active. Um, if not, I could have been a, ref, uh, a referee, but my membership status is not active at the moment. But find someone there and let them just reference it. Those are the two I know that you can get like today within a, a very short period of time. Well, yeah, I don't know if any other person has some other. Um, uh, Kevin, sorry, Kevin mentioned the, that he studied electrical engineering before if I, if I have listened yes. correctly. So yeah. there's also the, what's it called now? The Institute of, of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, IEE. Yeah, IEE, -E -E, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can also check that out. I don't know how long it takes to be a registered member, but I have, my friend is a part of that. Um, organization and she used that during her own P2DF interview as well. So just check a lot of voluntary bodies that you can join within now and your interview and as to the question of like Austin said they might not really 
have the time to you know go into the activities that you do to show your level of participation in any voluntary organization but uh, i think it's a responsibility for you to check what they actually do so if it comes to that that they ask a question about what they do you have an idea and you can speak to that yeah that's very important too so you, you essentially you are not a member of an organization that you don't know anything about you should know what the organization does um but you might not necessarily have been the president of the organization or presented the paper in the uh, in their conference mm -hmm. and all that, but know what they do. Yeah. So I think the other hand that was raised was Bridget's hand. Um, Bridget, are you still there? Yeah, me. Can you hear me? Oh yeah. Okay. So I have um a couple of questions. So I'll just start with the first one. Okay. Okay. Um. So my research paper is on my research interest rather is on enhancing economic growth through gas rich infrastructural investment in an area. Okay. okay so my question now is um I think I'll channel it to precious. But precious please just be a bit slow. I don't know. You are really fast when you're talking about renewable energy energy. So I'm still going to ask Precious is currently I'm... off the meeting. She's got another meeting that is speaking her busy. Yeah, but you can go ahead. One of us will be able to attend. Okay, let me ask them. Um, so, how can we improve the oil sector through gas rich infrastructure and not first to fall? That's the renewable energy. That's the first question. And then, the second one is um, when they ask you why did you choose a particular school, I chose Investor of Dundee. So they ask me why did I choose that school? Because most times, most schools have the same. You check their site, okay, and they'll tell you, okay, why is it study with them? You see, it's almost the same thing, almost all the schools mm -hmm. are same. So they ask you, why do you speak a particular school? Why do you, why do you respond? And then um, they ask you, how can your course? I have actually, I actually registered for, I actually applied for energy finance, okay? okay? And then they ask you, how can your course be relevant in the industry? Okay. okay. And then the final one is, yeah. Um, somebody did an interview today and then they asked the person, um, why is your what can your course do for like how can your course how, how can your course be used in um, insecurity in the country? So imagine they take you out to study and then they're expecting you to come back and give security. So, how can you do it? And then my course, of course, is energy finance. So, they ask me that kind of question, what do I respond? <laughs> they may be the last. Yeah. No, I mean, for, for you think, you remember the last <laughs> Okay, so yeah. maybe we just continue then going with remember the last one coming for the sake of time. Um, I, I'll try to attend to this, and Rosemary and uh, Josephine will make contributions to it. Now, if you are Number one is I can't really remember anybody in my class that was asked why he chose a particular school over another uh, because um, so long as the school is in the PTBF list of approved schools, then um, you have a right to choose any of them. Imperial College, uh, Robert Gordon University, anything. Now, um, a quick response is always um, in relation to you haven't identified a professor or a lecturer who shares a common research interest in that school. So, because you could have people who share the same interest in, uh, in London, for instance, or in Germany, and those ones have their hands filled up already. So they have sufficient students they are working with, they are not taking any other extra students. But in the University of Dundee, there are quite a number of PhD scholars there. Um, maybe that's the place you found a lecturer who is um, having the same interest and who is able to accommodate new students. Now, for gas, how gas relates or improves the energy sector in Nigeria? Um, actually, uh, there's quite a lot of ways to go around it. Um, it's just to study natural gas processing very well. Number one is Nigeria is known for flaring gas. If you are anywhere from Niger, there's how it seems to say acquire bombs, um, or In fact, 
one of the main causes of the black street is in Port-a-Cost, apart from the um, the what's it called again, the illegal refineries. Another contributing factor is gas flaring in Nigeria. So uh, we flare a lot of our gas, and gas has economic value. So being able to process it adds more money to the pocket of the country. Again, um, gas, uh, uh, what's it called, combustion of gas is more energy friendly than combustion of, uh, of um, uh, petrol itself because of um, the efficiency at which is born, the amount of CO2 that is generated. For energy finance, um, energy finance, I think, if I were in your shoes, of course, these are not static answers like copy and paste, but they are just ideas. If I was in your shoes and I'm doing energy finance, then I would try to relate it to all these um, marginal field owning companies because they are very small companies. Managing their finance properly is actually very essential to them. So I, I would try to, if I were in your shoes, I would try to tie it into those marginal field operator kind of relationships. For security, um, there is something I do sometimes. If you ask me a question that I don't really know, I try to bring an idea that is not very, you know, from outside that scope and make it relevant to the scope. So if I'm asked on how my scholarship is going to improve security in Nigeria, of course, if I travel abroad, study on that scholarship, I save up some money, I pick somebody from one of the uh, security challenge um, places in Nigeria, put the person in school. So I have contributed to making Nigeria safer by putting one person in one of these schools under some level of scholarship, which is something that pretty much anybody who is under PTD scholarship can afford in Nigeria, even if it is one semester or 150,000 Naira scholarship. It's something affordable, and that might be your saving grade. So sometimes you go out of the box, bring something that is not directly related, make it relevant. But again, if you have no idea, like Justin already mentioned, don't beat about or around the book. So Justin and uh, Rose, please, your contributions if you have any. Uh, okay. Um, for me, uh, for how, um, or for why rather she picked the school that she picked, you mentioned one in that you had a common interest with the um, with the, the, who is that now? Yeah. Somebody in the school, like a yeah, PhD. Yeah, a professor in the school and all that. Yes, yeah, so that's one way to go. And true that a lot of schools will have like a general template of why you should pick me. But you can always still use it because these are still reasons. For instance, RGU, the school that I'm in, they have a very... Um, high rate of employability for their students when they're done. And I'm sure that a lot of schools also have that, but that's something to say to these PTDF officials, not that you, it's not employ, it's not a high employability rate for just um, UK companies, but an international employability rate. So you could go anywhere, even go back to Nigeria and still be recognized with a certificate from such school, maybe even Dundee. So this can also be another point that your school has a high employability rate. The, the courses that you're going to be taking will have a, a very high impact in the industry. And you, you know, like Precious said the other time, you detailed in how those courses will provide relevance. And like I said earlier, these things you can actually just check online to see how your course or your school can bring about some value to the country, to, to, to the oil and gas industry. And then for, I think the other question was, how can, okay, the, the one of how can your course reduce insecurity in the country and you're studying energy finance. Uh, what I thought of immediately when you asked the question was, well, you're done with your school, like when you're done, if, if you, by God's grace, you're given the opportunity to go study in the school of your choice and you, you're done with energy finance and come back to Nigeria because you're a patriotic citizen and you, <laughs> you know, create a niche for yourself in that you start, um, Austin said something about going into the marginal, margin operators or something like that, marginal field operators. 
you could start your own business more or less i don't know but it's always ambitious to have like a business plan an idea and people to fund you and if you have a business and you're training more people in this energy finance that you have studied so that they can have the skills to be able to do what you can now do you are creating job opportunities and reducing the number of people that would you know otherwise go out to the streets and become criminals and that's a way of reducing security globally and so I think that's a way that PTBS scholarship has contributed to the security problem in Nigeria. So that's something to think about. There's always a way. If you do, if you create opportunities for people, you are reducing the number of um, crime that could otherwise happen or be committed by people who do not have those opportunities. And your exposure, which PTDF would give you, would be um, a way you know, to be able to also grant the same opportunity to a whole lot of other people. So that's something I thought about too. Mm -hmm. And why your course is relevant to the industry, please just check online. Like I, I can't really speak to energy finance, but I'm sure that you will see a lot. And as per energy, like even the oil and gas industry everywhere is transitioning to, oil and gas companies are transitioning to being energy companies. And I'm sure energy finance will have a role to play in, in that space as well. And so if you're able to, you know, carve that out more in detail and sell it to PTDF, it will work. That's what oh, I believe. Bridget, when is your interview? And on Thursday. Okay, so, um, I don't know how you got, how did you get to know about this um, conversation? Because I think Precious should have been in a very good position to really talk details yeah. with you on this because um, herself, her master ended up being in something energy management related. So oh, nice. I think you have more information to give to you on this. Um, okay. I don't know how do I get your contact okay. or are you on linkedin yes i've I'll, I'll, I'll just a message on linkedin already okay so that should be a way out so we could arrange for a one-on-one -on -one. hopefully she has the time because the professor can be a very busy person sometimes so good any contribution or we move to the next question yeah so like i'm just going to contribute um the last question she asked about, like, how can your studies or your scholarship be given this opportunity in, in reduce, like, the insecurities in Nigeria and all that? So, for me, it's very practical what you said. Another way is that since you are going to be, be doing, like, a energy finance, you will be work. you, after this, you should work with, like, the big guys in Nigeria like all those big, the big, the ISCs, and we know, we know them now. <laughs> so you should come up, you can try to come up. Oh, gosh, you can't hear. Um, can you hear me at this time? Yeah, I can hear you. Also. Yeah. I can hear you. I can hear you. Well, someone said I can't hear in the, the group, in the chat. So what I would advise is just try to... You another suggestion is since you'll be working with these guys, so you plan on along your one of your main projects or one of your side projects will be like looking for a way, like creating a platform where these companies actually support, like train, like people, like let's say less place or other people in those communities. So it's a very good because you 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 be working your work as a uh, energy finance. It's not just energy finance; like it's going to be more of like energy project, like project management and stuff. And it, so it brings you, you close to the policy makers. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be very close to like closely related to the policies behind the the communities and everything. So you have a very good you have a very good platform to like create an avenue where these go, these companies have no choice but to meet to this means like training the locals, training people in those areas, in those regions. So it's a very, very, like, your course is very, very good. Like, you should be gone. Let me tell you one company you should be gone for. You know, uh, energy, international energy. And so, like, 
the priest be gone in for open yeah. he get the box for you so just try and one thing let me just quickly go ahead when you get these scholarships please and please try to connect to people it, it's not only about the books it's not only about the your school project connect make connections with people in the industry attend events if you can don't just focus on your book 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 because you will need them you will need them because it's in those connections you can even find internship and probably your, your job so like make those connections that are very very important very very important that's very correct then the other question was what again i forgot the other questions eh? I think pretty much all the questions so are the one on one with pressure. Uh, yeah. Okay, maybe I could just wait for pressures. Maybe when I speak to her, I could just ask her. Oh, okay. If there's something uh, urgent, go ahead. Yes. And... <clears throat> yeah. Okay. There's a question um they ask again. And okay. then they ask, like, we should find an event, okay, or a problem in the industry that can be solved with the course that you're actually going for. So how do we really know what problem, what event in the industry that if you go something like if you if you were there, you know after after mm. the scholarship and then you are back, to, that you stopped. I don't know how to really put it, but oh, okay. So just let me just quickly like just chip in a little bit. Yeah. Let's look at the Niger the and um, Niger Delta as an example. We know there are a lot of like. Uh, a lot of the bunkery bunkers yeah. like people uh, taking this uh, oil from the pipes and everything is because these ah. people they are not empowered. If they actually have, if these companies actually create platforms for them where they can actually, can we hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, if these companies like create like avenues for these people where they can actually develop themselves by sending to school like have that having like different like the problem here is there's bunker there's bunk there's all bunker and stealing up and this spillage and everything that is a problem so how can we solve it you you know that this is the problem and you are working with the fi uh, like a financial finance system like that's your post and management and all that so what are they, what what are they allocating their finances to it's something you can bring up like maybe in the meeting you can also have like bring up a top and maybe you can bring up a like i said earlier you create like a project by side by the side where you can make them finance this project it's also a very very good one actually yeah so the other thing you can say like justin has always been on the path of crisis set up on the internet and see um now a problem identified is a problem have so the major part is identifying what the problem is um i remember i was discussing with a friend one time uh, he's a doctor but he's applying for the scholarship as well which most people will consider rather strange but i don't see any strange thing because if you have worked with people who work offshore if you've been close to people who work offshore you find that after very long periods of working offshore People come back and they have some kind of not very clearly strange behavior, but uh, it's called a uh, professional deformation. They begin to act in certain ways that reflect the fact that they stay in very small communities away from the rest of the people. So that's that behavior and how to manage it or how to prevent it could be something only a doctor would be able to do, right? Now, if you are in the class of um, uh, the one thing you can do is also to um, look at, for instance, um, the big oil companies are already transitioning. They are becoming energy companies more than oil companies, right? Total has changed to total energies, and you know that wave continues. Now you are coming to the UK. The UK, I think, is the world leader in this energy transition process. So you could I beg to differ, but let's not let's not go there. 
Um, well, I don't know, but I've been to conferences here where people fly in from mm -hmm. Brazil and, you know, to, to do Yes. <laughs> and we are driving the next zero in the UK. <laughs> so, but you, you, you can relate how you will learn from this. Of course, the big energy companies in Nigeria are not going to transfer their technology and their, where their policy is down to the smaller companies, the likes of Tech Plus, the likes of IQ. <laughs> You could position yourself as one who is coming to lead that energy transition in those companies that are fully Nigerian. Seplat, ITO, Midwest, and Mende. Yeah, so it's more like just. Can you mute Infinix Smart? Mute the person. Okay, uh, can I even see? Hey, Infinix Smart. Okay, so let's. Let me see. Yeah, so, but that's pretty much it. Um, Ubuna, your hand is raised. I think we've got a couple of other hands that are raised. Daniel's hand is raised. Yeah, Moses has had a question. Yeah, Moses has had a question. Moses has had a question. Okay, so Moses. I don't want to stay there. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for your time. A lot of your business can do for creating time for this uh, night in way as prior scholars. Yeah. Uh, it is quite late in my place because I'm not I'm presently not in the country also. So okay. as for me, I really appreciate all your enlightenment. For those that ask about you, I think uh, one of the our guests we can talk about the IE. For IE from membership professionals, we can join it within a day. Okay. Uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm an active member by God grace. So Perfect. if you register, you can do everything online. For IE, IEEE, International yeah. Institute so of Electrical Technology. That's Electric. a note for Kelvin. Yeah, and so any Kelvin, other take note of that. Right. So you only need to pay your, uh, you have to pay some dollar. I think it's like hundred dollar or less than that. Because during the time I registered, then they were, the price was subsidized. So if you can pay, you can pay that. Yeah. Okay. So for me, for me, I I don't really have much to ask about because I have admission already in UK by God grace. I I, oh, wow. <laughs> I have like up to two or three, so <laughs> I've been dealing with UK for long. So, yeah. but what I want to ask, uh, and also I have a, a program. I've also done a program course under EU sponsorship. So yeah. I uh, I've also studied outside in by God grace. So, yeah. but I have vision. I have a Tajay University in that UK. Unfortunately, it's part of this PTDF approved school. So yeah. what I want, to, what I intend to do is like a continuation of what I'm doing. So I'm also in renewable energy. I study electric light in my undergraduate. I'm also into renewable energy. I have done some research work by God's grace, right away from undergraduate. So what I just want to ask, because anything that has to do with Nigeria, I'm always very fearful. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, this part of Nigeria. So this, this PDT is it really fully funded. So I hope that because I'm much concerned about that aspect. Because we had the case of when Nigeria is saying some people are brought back, and I think they did not really pay them on time. So from your experience, is it really, as, as, as it is quoted, is it truly fully funded? I mean, you have your allowance regularly? Because me, I believe already that I, I believe I'll be selected. <laughs> so yeah. so I, don't, I don't want yeah. you to think, I you are not even talking about passing interview. So I know interview is settled by the mercy of God. So, but I want yeah. to, is it, because I also apply for that thing. I'm also planning my PhD because I've already, I'm already completed a master. So I'm about to complete a master by Google. So I, I because I'm a secure a PhD opportunity also. So, but I need to count the course and compare. Okay. So um, just very straight to the point, PTDF is fully funded. They take care of your fees and they pay you some money. Currently, I don't know for other countries, so it was very will help us. So in the UK, they pay, I think 1,100 if you are doing a master's and then 1,550 pounds if you are doing a PhD. So I don't know what is paid in France for Rose, please help us with that. Um, well, okay. for, for France, it depends on the cities actually. If I'm okay. Paris, okay, <laughs> it's tricky because I know some people are in Paris, but they're not getting up to those who are in IFP. So, because the standard of living for each city is different. So for Paris IFP, they're paying them 1,200 euros for the masters. 
And then yeah. I think for the PhD is one four. Okay. Irrespective of the city. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for yeah. that information. Then, Mr. Augustine, you are even bearing the same name with me. I'm also Augustine. I'm oh, actually wow. Moses <laughs> Augustine. Yeah, so okay. I just saw your name. I said, I saw you are my name mate. Uh, my son name is Moses. Why my oh, name is wow. Irike and Augustine. Augustine Augusta. is my English name. So and we are yeah. even so I would like to I don't I would like to get your contact, sir. Because we need to oh. really discuss. I am this issue I'm coming to UK this year by God's grace. I no have problem. been dreaming, I, I have been having a lot of affiliation in UK, but I've not been there physically, so I know this year <laughs> by God's grace, my journey. We are waiting UK. for you. Yeah. Okay, so, so I, you, I, will, I, will, I will I will get your contact that WhatsApp or LinkedIn. I will if I, so I'm on I will like to, um the same name to go make our gospel. Just drop okay, me. Okay, I should start with LinkedIn. Yeah, drop me a message on LinkedIn, then we can take it off from there. Okay, I thank yeah. thanks for your time. Thanks. So just a little. I will need to change my location a little bit. But the meeting continues, but I need to move around a bit. My battery is running low, and I don't have a socket close by here. So I'll need to move around to plug my laptop. But questions continues. Somebody else, there are four hands raised here. Um, John, your hand okay, is okay. raised. I don't know the order, please. If your hand was raised first and I missed it, um, it's not intentional. Um, I just don't know who raised hand first or who raised hand next. But... We try to get to all the questions. Uh, John, please go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Hello. John, your network is back in. We can't hear. Hello, John. Your network is really. Or we are struggling to hear you. Maybe he should just type the question. Okay. Hello. Uh, just in case. Uh, you're... And, uh... I hope you can hear me. Hello. Can no, hear you we now? cannot hear you. Okay. Hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? Now, yes. Okay. Can you hear me now? Nanajan Network. Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, thank you very much. Um, um, I was actually trying to find out what are the uh, possibilities for uh, health professionals, and um, I was just wondering. Um, as uh, I'm really uh, happy, kind of calm now that I'm understanding that. Uh, there are possibilities for people that don't have, uh, you know, backup and all of that. So, okay, backup, like in terms of a Nigerian balance, you know. Uh, yeah. I think I feel better about that now. Uh, then, uh, what are the possibilities for the medical uh, professionals? So, I don't know. I don't know. Because most time, when you say you are a doctor or you are a medical, They say, ah, you people, you know? So I don't know. Uh, what are the opportunities for medical personnel? Hello, can you I hear actually me? Applied for, I actually applied for uh, um, uh, uh, this thing. Um, Environment, health, and safety. So that was what the environmental uh, pollution, health, and safety. Uh, that was what I. Uh, I applied for. So, masters. Yes. Can you please help me? Hope you heard my question. Sorry, is he... hello? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear Hope your question? You was... my question. Yes, yes. Yes. It was breaking somehow, but I think we heard you relatively well. So I think the summary is that PTDF is not, they are concerned about your current certificate, like what you have studied in the past. 
right? But they are even more interested in the solution you are going to bring in the future. So if one has studied health, right, and is going to provide a solution that helps the oil and gas industry, um, then depending on how well the individual performs in the interview and all the other credentials, they wouldn't say, oh no, this person is not an engineer. Like I mentioned, I know a guy who is studying something on renewable energy. Policy self is not the engineering part, but the policy side of it. Now, I know somebody who is doing logistics and supply chain management on that TCDF as well. So, and one might think, oh, these are not um, engineering people, or TCDF is just for engineers and all that. But the truth is, these things are, they are not compulsorily people from engineering as people as, you know, it looks out there. Uh, yeah, so it's more of relate that thing you want to study. Show them how it um, improves life in the oil and gas industry. Show them how it solves the problem in the oil and gas industry. And, you know, just pray about it. And uh, you most likely be very fine. Yeah. And just to quickly add, like, HSC is a very is a very important course in the oil and gas industry. It's very very. Fact, you cannot the, underestimate it. There's no, no other co there's no company that pays that health and safety like we do in oil and gas. Exactly. <laughs> so now you're you, exactly. So what you have to do now is just go to the internet, look on how you can see a very good like how you can sell this this mark. It's like a market you want to sell to them. How can you set like set yourself up to sell this market to them because that is it. Because HSC very 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 like it's one of the most important. Let me tell you, okay. Let me just give you a quick every we, every meeting in oil and gas starts with the HSC. Exactly. I started so that's that's a drilling operation if there's a safety hazard. Exactly. So you know, yes. so there's a lot. It's valid. It's valid. It's valid. You know valid. That safety people are valid joining in the oil and gas industry. If you had like okay, when I when I was in my internship, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> so so like they make you go for a HSC drill, like a drill for for some days, a slotted amount of hours that you have to fulfill. And they give you one stamp, one booklet like this. You know, I didn't do that thing for the first month. They wanted to finish me. <laughs> So, like, it's very, very important. So, what you have to do is go to the internet, like, go to the... Now, everything is on the internet. That is one good thing. Just go and search the importance of this in the oil and gas industry and make it, own it. Make it your own. Make it, like, your, your this thing. Because that's it. The truth of the matter is whatever you present to them, whatever you have given them in your SOP, as we have said earlier, you should be able to defend it. And the and situation might come in the sense that you didn't even include it, but you have a better understanding now. You can say it when it comes. Just try to convince them why this is important in the industry. They're not necessarily, I don't think they're actually looking for a good or bad answer. They just want to know that, are you even convinced on you yourself? Are you convinced on going for this particular thing? Like, there's yeah, no good convince, wrong. convince us convince us that what you are studying you are conv convinced us that you are convinced about what you want to study <laughs> the, the, the because no like it's a truth actually but hsc is a very very good cause and coming from a medical background gives you an edge already yeah in the company i myself and Justin were working in lagos we used to say that HSE for us is a boundary condition. So nothing is so important that or so <laughs> urgent that you have to do it, uh, that you have to compromise on safety. So we yeah. can stop operations, we can stop anything if Everything. the process is considered unsafe. That's how big the oil industry is on safety. So coming from a health, a health background is a plus. I'm telling you, it's a plus because I've seen a lot. A lot of people, okay, I know I know someone that did pharmacy actually, 
but he's working in total HSC. Yeah, the oil and gas does not discriminate profession. It does actually. not really. You just need to know what, how important is the, like how can you add value? Nobody wants like what is the value you're bringing? That is the thing. Like what's the value? So just and there are a lot of in tons of information out there. So just try to arrange, go to the internet, solve the internet, arrange this this thing, and just put it in a way that I can present it to them in a simple term. Yeah, that's it. Okay, thank so you very next, much. Any thank other questions, I really appreciate it. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. I hope all the questions were attended to because your, really your network was breaking at the time. Yeah. So there were three other hands raised at the point. Um, I don't know if the questions have been answered. There are two hands raised right now. So okay. any of you can unmute and go ahead, please. Hello. Sorry, Good I'm evening. trying to manage my network, my, my battery. Yeah. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. good evening. We can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Um, first, I have to acknowledge what you guys are doing. It's commendable. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And, you know, um, this uh, tension that you feel when, you know, you have something big like this, you know, just aligning in your life and you don't know, you're yeah. clueless of what is next, you know, and you don't even know how to tackle it. With this and, uh, question and answer session, it has, you know, uh, reduce some of those tensions and then by God's grace I can say I'm a bit more relaxed now and I really really appreciate it. and thank you very much um, thank you very much everybody that is here thank you for your time okay um, I also came across something online um, they said having two pages of uh, okay the maximum uh, word count for the SOP was supposed to be 500 500 okay. and then for me personally I have two pages and I was shortlisted so uh, I saw a lot of people that said they had two pages and some said they had less and uh, you know they are shortlisted as well but uh, people are saying that um, that is a, a very big uh, minus for some of us that have two pages and we stand a chance to you know get eliminated already so it's like you are being called upon to be eliminated, you know, um, gracefully. And then that's the first one. I hope that wouldn't be a minus for me. And then the second one is, um, do I need to rewrite my SOP to reduce my word count? And then uh, if I do that, would I have to print them up and then I'll have to uh, distribute to the panelists when I get there. And then um, uh, the final one, or the other one is the selection also. They said this, the selection is based on geopolitical zones. Uh, please, I don't know anything about it. Is, is it that um, we have, I don't know how many, unfortunately, I don't know how many geopolitical zones and how many people also is being selected per geopolitical zone. So please, if you, if you don't mind throwing light on these things, it might help me, please. Thank you. Okay, so the question on, um, we'll start from the last. So geopolitical zones, the selection is majorly on state by state basis. Um, then the only advantage on geopolitical zone is for the Niger Delta. So um, where other states get to um, nominees or how do I call it, two successful oh. applicants, two scholars, the Niger Delta states, the oil producing states to get like three. So if Enugu is having two persons for masters to the UK, um, Delta state is supposed to have like three. That This is based on previous um, practices. However, the selection is not on geopolitical, ba uh, geopolitical zone basis, it is on state by state basis. So if I am from, uh, if I am from River, I'm not competing with all the people from the Niger Delta. I'm competing against those from River only. Then um, on word count, usually it's good to stay within the range of the word count, plus or minus a few words. Um, the reason is that 
um, professors or everybody, people don't really like to read too much generally. So if they said 500 is maybe because they wanted to be able to stay within that 500. But if you have been shortlisted with more than 500, yes. then, um, you know, I, I really think they are cool with it. Yeah, but if at all you have to rewrite, ensure that you have your key points in the written word. And um, um, the talking is going to be one of the key components of the whole thing. Yeah, Rose, you want to say something? Please go ahead. Yeah, but, um, okay, I just want to say that I don't think that should be an issue. Because yeah. on that, they are going to focus on how you present this. You've written this huge thing for them. How can you? put it yeah. very simple and clear actually and 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 there's a mistake i had a lot of people did and they do they like using like a lot of words for just something that is from a to b try to be as yeah. precise as possible because in the process you can lose the message That's yeah true. so and most of those people they are tired already because they have been meeting people they have been meeting people. So just try to don't over summarize your work so that you don't lose all the information, but don't give too many details. Just details when needed, actually. Okay, so do I rewrite or the details would be uh, whilst I'm presenting? You can try do I to rewrite and take just to be just rewrite, but for me. Yeah, to, to be on the safe side, rewrite, yes. but ensure your key points are there. Yeah. That if okay. if there is that mandate of five hundred words, play by the rules. Yeah, you understand. Stay rewrite. within the limit that has been stated. But in rewriting, ensure that your key points are there, and then okay. those things you are taking out, if you consider them relevant, your your mouth now helps you <laughs> personally i prefer i prefer to talk than to write yes. so, okay so i'll have... rewrite and then i'll take it along whilst i'm presenting my uh credentials i'm going to they'll also collect to... they will collect yeah. you have to give them a sample right. of it. actually you're supposed to have like two copies of your yeah. of right. so one okay i'll print me okay yeah. okay so you can Thank even you. print three nothing um, yeah. yeah. So I think um, and, that was um, done. Yes. yes. And for okay. masters, yes. like I know, like Augustine and the rest have spoken about, like publications and everything. They are more keen on those, like publications yes, for people. Yes. Yeah. That's correct. But if you have, you can see take work. They are more like for the PhDs. <laughs> if you are going for PhD, I don't know how you want to do. It. I don't have a publication. Even if it's an article you wrote for. One column, this thing, just take it. Anything. Anything at all. Anything at all, just take it. Okay, thank you for bringing that up because I was about uh, asking something about that. So um, I have something I'm writing or I've written with my boss on this. Um, okay. okay, sorry, I didn't, I didn't bring my background in. I'm a mechanical engineer. I work as a okay. pipeline engineer here in Lagos. So... Okay. Um, We've done something on uh, failure analysis, pipeline mm -hmm. failure analysis. And then um, mm -hmm. he specifically uh, did a research on um, uh, dent and gout defect on buried pipeline. So we have an article that has been written in that aspect or to that effect, but the article is still undergoing um, review uh, with NJE, is it ERS or so? So I actually printed that up. I printed a few copies to take along, but I don't know how, you know, I'm going to tell them that, okay, this is the publication. Yeah, it has, so it, when, you search online, you not see it, and, you know, something like yeah, that. They, they actually not because they ask for publication certificate. Yeah, they may not search online, but uh, what I would do if I'm in your shoes, um, I'm going to take, normally when you send a paper, when you send a manuscript or publication, they should send you an acknowledgement exactly. email during that, you know, okay. that So print that thing and go along with it. So print the, print the paper itself, print that, um, print that um, the email. acknowledgement that email. email. Yeah. Go with it. Yeah, okay. that, should be, that should be fine enough. And then pray, because sometimes you can get to a place and the person you are jamming, 
uh, will be free. That, that prayer factor is very important. Yeah. So, yeah, but, I can be overemphasized. Yeah, you can. I, 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 I met somebody who was, you know, you just pray about it and then go with um, what you have. That's what and, Daniel. So, yeah. uh, does, yeah. and another okay, thing came to because someone was like, they asked her about, is it him or her? I've forgotten, about like and the mission for uh, PTDF's mission. Yeah, in fact, like, me, they asked me, they asked me the full meaning of PTDF. <laughs> so you should have, just yeah. do a background check on PTDF. And yeah, just, you have to. Just do a background check to. on PTDF because they might ask you because someone just randomly just throw a question. That might be your only question. So they might ask you, what's yeah, PTDF? Me, what's the meaning of PTDF? What is our mission? In, what is like what I, is kind of? When I was done with the interview, I think that was my last question. They had asked um, why I should be the one selected amongst all the people that are applying. All those things. Uh, so uh, out of the blue, they were like, "So who who is is it? Who am I applying to for the scholarship?" I said PTDF. They were like, "So what's the meaning of PTDF?" <laughs> now uh, you know it's confusing. A lot of people think it's petroleum trust fund. It is not so. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so. Uh, so it's petroleum technology development <laughs> fund. <laughs> Yeah, so those are little, little things that one yeah. needs to know. Yeah, they are not the bulk of the question, but somewhere along the line, they drop in. Yeah, yeah. so here it does. I think your hand is raised. Okay, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can hear you. All right, so, okay, man. thank Just you very much. Me. Can you hear me? Hello, Josephine, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Just Wait, go ahead. Yeah, yeah sorry. Go. Did you call me? Okay, yeah, go ahead, please. Okay, so uh, my first question, okay, first of all, thanks for the session. I really learned a lot. So my first question is, what advice would you give to someone that is, okay, what you are applying for is completely different from what you did say in undergraduate. All right? Yeah. Okay, I mean, you see, let me use my... Uh, I studied like cultural economics and then I want to do um, supply chain and logistics. That's what I applied for. So what advice would you give? Something like that. Then um, the second question is, when you are trying to um, answer questions about supply chain, now I'm, I'm, I discovered that supply chain is quite broad because it focuses on all aspects of um, um, the oil and gas. Even if you want to take the options, or the downstream, there's always a supply chain factor in all these cases. So, um, so my question is now: Where, okay, as someone that is experienced, you have a lot um, um, my ground in Ireland. That where do you think one should focus on looking at Nigeria as a country? I don't know if you guys, if you had that, if you are saying. Oh, hello? Okay, so if I get your question correctly, you're asking what aspect of the industry is supply chain supposed to be focused on, correct? No, 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 that's what I'm asking. I'm asking no. that so, um, supply chain focuses on all aspects of the oil and gas. Okay, from yes. Upstream, midstream, and then downstream. So, yes. my, so the question now is what advice would you give to someone that, okay, um, to focus on? Looking at Nigeria as a context, mm. you, you get that. One. Yes, I yeah. think I seem to get it. Okay. Um, now, okay, yeah, I understand your background was not in supply chain, right? Yes, yes, it's not. Okay, so essentially, like I mentioned, your background is important, but more important is the solution you are offering or you are preferring. Now, um, I, I'm almost even not able to focus on one particular area of supply chain that is most important in Nigeria because supply chain for the oil and gas industry is tied to everything from the time you want to drill, you need to move your rig from a place to another. Uh, you need to move equipment, you need to move personnel. Now, by the time you are done drilling, you need to move crude 
either by pipeline or by whatever means from one location to another location. And then even when the crude is refined, you still have to do that supply chain aspect of moving from refinery to maybe tank farms to filling stations and, you know, a whole lot of that. However, um, I don't, of course, there will be an aspect, there would have been something you saw that sure. triggered that interest. So don't, um, don't let anybody get, get you confused at this moment because it will be difficult to go and start picking up a new interest at this point. So that particular thing you saw that made you interested in supply chain in the oil and gas, just focus on it. Um, develop it, um, develop a conversation around it, and you will be fine. So I, um, all right, so for the LinkedIn names, I will we'll get to that before the end of the um, meeting. So, but if, if what you saw was in drilling, if you saw a break in supply chains in the drilling um, sector, just focus on it and discuss it. There is a whole lot to discuss in drilling, the gas supply chain. If you take me, there is a whole lot to discuss. In, in fact, if you talk of pipelines in Nigeria and all the vandal vandalism and all that and all that, that's a, a whole lot of something else to discuss. There's also a whole lot of conversation. In fact, if you pick Dangote Refinery, for instance, and all the supply chain issues that is going to be associated with it, how it's going to impact traffic in Lagos, for instance, is a whole discussion on its own. Yeah, but it will be good. All of these I'm mentioning now are like examples you can use to support your case. But that's one that you saw that made you interested. Just stay on it. Develop a full conversation around it and you will be fine. Okay. I don't know if that helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so somebody else hand is raised to do. I don't know if I'm getting the name correctly, please just uh, forgive me if I pronounce it wrongly. Yeah, if you can hear us, please um, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yes, hi everyone. Good evening. Hi. Hi, I Hello. just want to thank uh, the organizers of this program, Chukwe Mecca, the Precious, and OLG, and uh, Rosemary. You guys have been very awesome, and uh, I want to sincerely thank you for uh, setting up this webinar. I, I have, this is about my fifth. Time uh, approaching PTDF. So I've got at least chance. I've discovered that over time, I've never met two same panelists at the same time. Can we hear me? Yeah, yeah. Can we hear we me? Can hear you. Yes, we can. Hi, can we hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. I so I I've I've been to those that panels for this is this would be about the fifth time. And um I've got a quite a lot of experience with those panelists and I've discovered that um, at no two same time have I met same panelists, different approaches to the questions, different interviewers, different method and all that. I mean, the science, I, I studied space science. I, I studied space mm -hmm. science and then um, I'm applying to uh, study astrophysics, which has just recently been included in the uh, PTDF uh, scholarship scheme. And um, in most of the cases, uh, uh, we we find it difficult to agree how we can use space in so as astronomy specifically astronomy or astrophysics to to solve problem in the oil and gas industries i i, I also discovered that hearing background and um, they look at my publications and uh, just the method of uh, citations and referencing uh, is a bit different from that of the engineering. And that also poses a lot of uh, you know arguments and you try to let them understand that this is how it is done in science and I'm not in engineering and all that and all that. So it's usually a problem. And then moreover, I uh, discovered that I 
Yes. I I have a two one in uh, physics, electronics, and MPhil in space science and astrophysics, and I'm applying uh, for a PhD in astronomy. Um, most times I have discovered that they pair me to people with engineering background, and that is uh, that poses a whole lot of problem. By the grace of God, I have a two one in my first degree and a first class in my M field, which I think would have been an advantage. But I, in 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 terms of looking at the certificates, I also discovered that there is there are gradings to A, B. I think I don't know how they do it in Wayek. It's been long I wrote Wayek, but you see something like B three, B two, and then then A A something and all that and all that and all that. Then my Wayek has a whole lot of series of C's, and then by the time they grade all those C's and is is already is already <laughs> bringing everything done. So by the time you get to the advanced certificate, like the uh, first the BSc and then the MSc, whatever it is, you are struggling with the panelists to raise grades here and there just to. So the, the way the, the the way the entire thing is structured with WAEC, like I don't know how they do it, but it's like they give grades to A and then there is certain grades for B, B two or B one. I don't know. Yeah. Then there's certain yeah. grade for B, yeah. Yeah. Certain grade for B. There's a certain grade for B, uh, for C. So uh, most of the grade is allocated to, to WAEC. So by the time you're coming to your first class and then all that, which I, I have, uh, my, my WAEC, which is, which, that has a lot, lot of C, has bastardized everything. So, and you are struggling with panelists to, to I mean, raise grade here and there. And uh, summer, summer, I, I'm a lecturer, I'm already, I've been, in the, uh, I'm already in the academia, so it, it's not a big problem for me to uh, really make my case when it, when it has to do with what I'm studying. I I, I think I, I should have them uh, very handy, yeah. and I've got international experiences, and also I I teach I teach in an international school uh, with uh, okay. with white folks, and I think I, I've got a whole lot of experience of people to work with, and also. Try to drive my idea home and how to, you know, uh, innovatively uh, create solutions with my problem. But these are the problems: the problem of, you know, allocating greater marks to the WAEC, and then, then for professional bodies, I think that, that's that's a bit new. That started last 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 time. Uh, professional, but it, it, usually it was um, awards, awards and all yeah, that. Yeah. And uh, you discover that. Every time you come, you know, I'm a regular customer. So, so you discover that every time you come, something new is coming up. So uh, the other time I have to go and work more on awards and I got all the five completed. By the time I'm coming last time, they told me you know, affiliations and then and all that. I don't know what they are going to say this time. No, but, uh, this, this, I think this time the, the God of you. Ibuku, Rosemary, should, should be my God this time. <laughs> Amen. That's good. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. I, it's just like to to supply some ideas to those that are coming in that this has always been the problem and all that. So they they need to see how to also work on all that the award thing, the, uh, the professional yeah, affiliation yeah. thing, the WAEC. If you don't have, if you have the one that has. So I, I I think in your case, what might be um yeah I don't know if you can hear me. Like me, please go and upgrade and collect the one that has these and C's and A's. Yeah. So, thank you. Can, can you hear me? Yes, I can yeah. hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Very clearly. Okay. So, I, I I think the the one that I really don't have an answer to is the YX. <laughs> because, <laughs> again, I don't know why TTDF has chosen to do it. But um, it's not just TTDF. I was... Um, or my bachelor's and master's was on a different scholarship by the federal scholarship board. And themselves, they also go back as far as WAEC. In fact, nice. that time um, I was just, we had finished secondary school, I think three years before I applied. And uh, I had a couple of other friends who applied with me. Uh, we, we would see like distinctions, B, 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 A, 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 all those kind of things. But in the end, even some of my friends couldn't still get it. And like I mentioned, sometimes these competitions are tight uh, if you are competing in certain kind of states. 
you know, there are more, there are certain places that is just very rigid. Like you come with a first class, you have 200 people with first class. Uh, if, for instance, it's not as if there are states that don't have first class, but there are years when, for instance, you come and people from your state with first class, you know, they were sleeping when the application was going on <laughs> and they did not apply. Now, for the aspect of arguing with the panelists on how these things can be used, how astronomy can be used, um, I will refer you to, there is this, the company is Russian, but they have an affiliate in Nigeria. So they do, they use satellite imaging to do, to explore for oil, like to, 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 to determine where there is oil and where there is no oil and it's cheap. The environmental footprint is, is close to zero because they are not moving equipment on ground. It's just, they use satellite imagery and then use some mathematical algorithm to interpret it. And they can tell you, I think they have over 90 something percent um, accuracy. Now, when, when it comes to satellite imaging to locate where OIA is, that has to do with geosciences. And uh, it has nothing to do with space science and then astrophysics, which has just been included in the PTDF curriculum. Okay, so if so, astrophysics uh, I, I, has been included, then um, a, a defense of it could be a reference to that. Maybe you could print that document that really has those things included. Yeah, but again, this mm -hmm. is another thing that happens CDF. Um, you have, at least at my time, you have like two chances of changing your research topic. Um, for instance, I was going to study um, something on drilling fluid um, for high temperature, high pressure wells, a particular, a particular um, type of drilling fluid for that. I was going to research into it. Now, somewhere along the line, I changed my research topic to something in materials for the commissioning of oil well. Um, now, after coming to the UK, I could still have like one chance of changing my research topic. Now, this is not, it's not like it's very, very advisable because it's good to know what you are going for and go for it. It makes your workflow faster and move, you know, at a pace that is um, really, really very fast. And one trick I know to interview is, is that if you have the advantage of knowing your area better than your interviewer, then you have an opportunity to drive that conversation. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, the guys who are coming from engineering, they won't, myself, I'm an engineer, and, uh, you know, but if you are not mentioning these differences between astrophysics, astronomy, and all these things, I might not know it. And that's pretty much the caliber of people you are going to meet. If they are from engineering background, you have that opportunity to drive that conversation, navigate it, and connect the dots in such a way that it will make sense to them. Some other time, if you, if you speak to them in the language of astrophysics people, they will be confused. <laughs> And, you know, somebody on an interview panel will not want to accept that the person is interviewing has confused yeah. So you need to come to that um, language. I, I, I had a presentation to give one day in the school here. Yeah. The guy who was um, there, one of them was from a professor in computer science, but he was going to listen to me talk about um, uh, the commissioning of oil well. Uh, by the time I started, when I was done, the question he was asking me is uh, if I was a politician or if I had interest in being politics. Because for him, he felt like the 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 approach to the explanation was so basic that you know somebody without any knowledge of it could see what I was trying to say and could relate to it. So these are things that maybe you could connect. Um, the only challenge I don't really know how we could address is the why. Uh, and is really big for PTDF. But again, uh, God of Rosemary can be your God this time, and all the people from your state who had better wire results <laughs> will be. <sleeping. laughs> yeah. 
they could have all slept during the application, man. or maybe all of them were applying for master somewhere, and you know that kind of thing. But apart from the PCDF, I think Chev- Chevney scholarship should be opening soon, and um, I don't know if they consider work in Chevney, but that's another angle that you can look at. I, I think there is pretty much um, uh, a good level of integrity with Chevney as well, so it's something you could also look into and consider. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Oh, that's uh, I good. think this is our last um, question, right? Yeah. yeah so I just uh, wanted to add a few. Sorry. Is, is there another hand that is raised that has not been addressed? Let me check. Uh, I wanted to just add something, please. Okay. Please Sorry. Hold, hold on. Let me just quickly address oh, okay. the last speaker and then you could talk. I thought he was the last um, question. Yeah. Okay. Just please go ahead. Yes. So, um, first of all, is the PST is that pastor? Is that short for yes. pastor? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. 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 I, I just call you pastor. <laughs> okay. So, um, first of all, I think I want to congratulate all. Um, commend your tenacity because you said that this is your peak time. Yeah. There's something my friend, used to say. my friend used to say, now we'll give up, fuck up. So you, you, you're showing up. And so thank you and welcome. And I wish you good in this one. And um, for the YX thing, there's this um, popular AA saying about how God should grant serenity for the things that we cannot change. And encourage for the things that we can actually change. So we know um, that PTDF focuses on work, but they focus on other things as well. You can't change your work grade, so it shouldn't bother you. That's that's my advice because these things can find a way to you know creep up in your head and make make you feel a bit concerned. But you should take solace in the fact that you were shortlisted. You know, they saw your white grades, you submitted that yeah. for your application and you were shortlisted. So it means that they saw the oh, your white grades. And so look for the things that you can indeed control, which is what the, the, the conversation that you would have with them on that day, your research proposal, your publications, your, your professional bodies, those things you can control and do your best there, you know, and the God of Rosemary would, you know, <laughs> come be to your God. It will be your God that day. Yeah. will be my yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, so, and I just want to emphasize uh, with you what um, Austin said. You are a scientist and you say that most times you meet a panelist filled up with engineers. You have that more or less blank canvas to drive however you want that conversation to go but you have to you know learn the skill of you know reading people you do not want to sound overly knowledgeable and you know you're trying to say oh no i'm right and you're wrong and i don't know if that has been an issue for you in the past but the best teachers are the ones that can explain the most difficult things as Austin said in the most basic way possible so you have to be able to bring whatever it is that you think you want to study down to the level of whoever is interviewing you. And then you also have to understand that PTBF is a body that yeah, they are all for you know giving out scholarships, but you check out what what PTDF stands for, and they are more or less an oil and gas institution. And they want to bring relevance first to the oil and gas industry and then you know at large to the country. So find out, and, and the fact that your course is now a part of uh, the PTDF list of courses means that there's actually value to be found the in the course to the oil and gas industry. So find those dots and you know connect. Those things you can change, be the best that you can be there. And I pray that everything will go well for you. I really wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Daniel, you wanted to say something. Um, we are running short of time. Yeah, thank you, thank you. For, so, uh, we are done like two hours. Long, yeah, so. I'm sorry, sorry. Yes, um, 
surprised you. I'm sorry for that. Um, please. I also wanted to just ask a quick one. Um, that I did. Um, I PSE is um, the Cambridge International exams at the basic level, like YEC level. So yeah. I also posted that in my uh, PTDF. I hope that will also count because I had Bs there that were far better. And it was like a mirror image of my YEC, and I had a lot of Cs also in my YEC. But IGCSC was a mirror image because I'm not really good at the cramming wire fast question thing. Now, I also want to ask if the getting admission in the universities that you had put up there is is going to be an advantage. Those are the two I want to ask. For the admissions, I don't think um, it plays any role that I remember. Um, the place it plays a major role is after you get the scholarship because once the scholarship is announced, especially if you are coming to the UK, um, if you intend to move immediately, then you need to move as fast as possible in getting admission. But uh, on the interview day, um, I don't think admission letter has any point. For the British, is it Cambridge, YX, something? Justin, I, I think you have some yeah, things to say on that. I just can't see. Hey! Yeah, Justin, I have some things to say on that. Great to God of Rosemary, I mean. <laughs> no, I, well, I think what I was trying to say, I actually wrote I just can't see. wrote the exam yes. sometimes. Yeah. I, yes, I also did that. But uh, like I said earlier, PTDF, they have their rules, they play by their rules. If it's work that they, they want, that's what they want. But then you have the opportunity to mention it during your interview that you had good scores or good grades um, in another interview. I know, I think I remember, if I remember correctly, I put it in my, my statement of purpose as well. But I think it served me better for when I was applying to schools, because I was trying to sell the fact that I really passed in both WIAC and IGCSC, my English test, and I didn't need to write an English um, language exam, those IELTS things that some schools require. And so I used my Cambridge and my WIAC results as evidence to show that I had a good command of the English language. So uh, basically what I'm trying to say is if, if PTDF thinks is work that they want. There's really nothing we can do at this point. But yeah. During your interview, if, if if you have the opportunity to speak to the other good scores that you you've had in other exams, then by all means, just you know, sell yourself. The interview is not about selling yourself. So if you have the opportunity to sell yourself, then just go for it. You know? Yeah. So um, I think we'll take the last question now, and then um, we'll do a closing remark. Um, John, your hand is raised. OK, thank you very much. Um, I think uh, very much. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. OK. Um, I, I noticed that uh, she was saying something like that she did the exam, and um, that uh, she applied to some school. So I want to understand, so do we have the opportunity of applying to uh, other schools after the interview or something with English exam or something where uh, after you've gotten the scholarship or then, then you want to change to another school and another this thing? We can do that. Yes, once, once you get the scholarship. Any school, don't go. Once you get the scholarship, any school in the UK that is in PTDF list, any the, what you can do is move from the UK application to France because I think France and Germany are in one category. Malaysia is I think France, Germany, and Malaysia are in one category. But if you are applying to the UK, if you get scholarship, even if you have gotten another admission today, you can change that school and go to in fact. If what you can change the school to any school that is on their list, that's just the summary of it. Yeah. You, you, you are not tied. To the I changed school my course. Even courses also, yeah. Even courses. 
I, like, I, like I said, when I when when we started this meeting, I started my my interview was on drilling engineering, well, drilling and well engineering. Well, I'm currently studying data science, so you have that room. They give you a window for when you can, you know, get back to them on the school that you applied to and you had your admission. You know, their job is just to send um, like a proof of fund or something to those schools once you have made up your mind. So keep up with the applications if you want to make more, even after you've got the scholarship. You have that room. Yeah. Uh, just one. Rosemary, you have something else to say before yeah. we? And I know that like. Now your focus is like getting this ETF like scholarship, the funding, because getting the funding is very easy to get admission abroad if you have the proper Once funding. You fund, if you have funding, Once you have money, 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 you can spend this You get those money. UK, all the scholarships they give for all the citizens, they will say you carry or European. Just get that, that is it. Get if you have the money, <laughs> you get admission. You see all these ILTS, you see, most mm. of them, like for Nigerians, they, they do it because you have the, the this thing, because you have the sponsorship. Yeah. So the focus is now whatever course you've chosen, try to sell it to the to the board or the committee you are going to meet for mm. your interview. The main thing is getting the sponsorship. Yeah. Don't worry yourself about the investors now. That one is secondary, like secondary. Is, that one is very easy. And it will even be easier once you get the scholarship. It's easier once Don't you get once you hold that ETF sponsorship. It's easier. So, with the rain, like, uh, like, it's 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 that people, like people, have, have, people when the schools are closed, people the application are closed. So far they you get that thing. for you. No <laughs> <laughs> for you. I'm telling you. So <laughs> they don't. For now, don't disturb yourself about the universities. Or, no, no, no. How are you going to sell yourself to these 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 people? And just pray to God that like, God grant you grace. That's the only thing. Man. In fact, I, I can tell you one funny thing that happened in my time. So I got admission to two schools in the UK in 2019. And I refused to defer their, I didn't defer the admission into 2021. Now, but once I got the PCDF scholarship, I just put five, I just wrote, a, you know, emails to the two schools, and they reinstated an admission that was how many years old. So once, once you have funding, once that funding is your power, just get it. That's it. Yeah. So um, thank you all for joining this session. Uh, I think um, I'm pretty, in fact, I'm surprised by the number. I wasn't expecting this much, but um, it's been a nice time talking with all of us. Thank you very much, Rosemary. Thank you very specially, uh, Precious and Josephine. And uh, to all the people that joined, I also appreciate all of you. We are glad you came. Once again, congratulations. Yep. Um, we hope to make this um, recorded session available on, um, lay on YouTube and hopefully maybe on Facebook. We we'll, would we'll share it across so that whoever is able to or whoever might be having the same questions can also refer to this and uh, get his questions answered. Um, once that is done, I really don't know how everybody got to know about it, but just for the sake of connectivity, um, you can find any of us that um, have spoken with you today on LinkedIn. And in case you have any further questions, you can always ask. Um, Josephine is Josephine or Chaye on LinkedIn. Um, Rosemary, I think she's it Iboko Rosemary Igwevesi. How did you write it again? You so just type your name. Yes, you already, the, yes, you already know our faces. Yeah, you you can see our faces already. But Rose, it's there's your native name inside. Yeah, it, right? it's there, but like I don't know how. I don't know the other. I think I'll find it whichever way. Let me okay, just write so, it. So, Rosemary. Let just put your name in the chat. Austin, I already put your Okay, and then Precious is Afolabi Precious. I think there are two accounts to her name, but you have seen her face, and then you'll be able to connect, and then um, we will be pleased to answer your questions as they come up. Hopefully, this was um, a good answer to
to the que- good efforts to answer all your questions, but in case there are any specific questions, you can always um, um, refer to either of us. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much once again. Rosemary, enjoy France. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> enjoy <laughs> Abadin. Fresh off. Uh, with you guys. Enjoy Calgary. Don't no, I know, I, no, I know one person dead. Uh, just yeah. simply, people should invite me. To where? To, to Abadin. Boring. Far. Abadin? Precious, you are too far. Uh, come yeah, over to now. The, to the, um, the candidates, I, I hope, I wish you guys the best. And please, when you get your congratulatory, congratulatory message. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Let's you, Austin. Thank you. Yeah. We look forward to that day when the congratulations begin to point. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, uh, Sorry, just one more question, please. Thank you. All. Yay. Sorry. How long? How long will you publish the outcome of this interview? Does it take time? Uh, you can't. You oh, can't. Yeah, you can't really predict it, but it should can't. come. I think. Um. Yeah, it's difficult to predict, but it should yeah. come before the academic year starts it's in really the respective August. country. July, August. Yeah, but you, you should Where? expect it. Sometimes it comes out in June, sometimes yeah. maybe July, but I think upper it should be August. Um, I think August, right? No, we went for induction in July, precious. I've forgotten. Yeah, I think the name is no, early July. I think July came or... earlier. Um, yeah, yeah. So just like, like I remember the first June, but, um, session in September. Yeah, but mm. the, it must be out before the end of August. That is what I know, except where if COVID-19 happens again, then like you get expecting so. from next year. Not next year. Well, but I was already living my COVID. life in another direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's <laughs> just that thank you all for coming and uh um precious thank you very much for setting up the meeting and giving us the privilege of using your zoom we can't pay for it but the best way to say thank you is to say thank you thank you very much (laughs) thank you very much (laughs) all the best (laughs) you save the recording for us and then we see how we uh, work it out and publish it Great. Uh, we're gonna have like the audio version and the video version, so it's it's gonna be easy for everyone to access that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, thank Just you. Bye bye. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Justin. I've heard a lot about Good you. Meet you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I want. To... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Austin speaks about you a lot. Just so you know. Only good things, though. Same thing here. Oh, Same no. Oh. <laughs> I, so I think the three of you should go offline and know yourself. <laughs> Baby girl. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, bye. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. I, I can stop the recording right now. So it's, oh, yeah, you can. Sure.